Sydney Swans coming out onto the ground. They'll be pretty fresh after belting Carlton by 60 points last week. One change. Ben McGlynn comes back into the side at the expense of Towers. But they are looking very threatening early on in the season. On the SCG, they love that ground. They play well there. And it's going to be a big, big test for the GWS Giants. Let's go to our call team for this game. It should be an absolute beauty. And behind the microphone, four-time Premiership player for Hawthorne in Jason Dunstall, triple Premiership player with the Lions in Alistair Lynch. And heading up our commentary team once again, a warm welcome to Dwayne Russell. Thanks, Sandy. Got a couple of the all-time greats with me, as you mentioned. Great to be here, and we're expecting a full house and an intense contest. Welcome, boys. Yeah, looking forward to this one, Duane. I really want to see what GWS can give us when they attempt to uh, upset Big Brother now. Yeah, it should be a cracking game. I mean, the Sydney Swans have shown some good signs, but GWS, after a really disappointing start, have bounced back last week. See the Sydney Swans rank one for points uh, four, number one, and rank two for points against. So that's a really pleasing aspect of the game, but all against Collingwood in round one and then Carlton in round two. Yeah, you're right, Lynchy, whereas GWS were abysmal in round yeah. one. I think I, like a lot of other people, thought they'd go to Melbourne and beat the Demons. They weren't able to do that. But then they bounced back with an incredible win over the Cats, who, who were coming off a brilliant win over Hawthorne in round one. So whilst you'd like to see some more points for, I think Leon Cameron would be very happy with what they're doing down back, the fact that they're not conceding that many points. They rank third in defence. And it's all about attitude here today. Can they back it up? You, I I think they thought they were just going to win against Melbourne in round one as well, but they certainly lifted last week. Also joining us this afternoon, some Sydney royalty back home, the Sydney Swans Premiership captain, Barry Hall. Welcome to you, Barry. Well, good evening, gentlemen. It doesn't get much better than this. We've got two teams in really good form. Weather conditions are absolutely perfect. The debris has dropped slightly. But I want to see what this guy produced today. We've seen, if you lived under a rock and haven't seen this footage last week, it's probably the most played tackle we've seen in recent times. But this is what Shane Mumford brings to the table. I want to see if he can bring this again. He brings an uncompromising view to the game. He's second efforts. He's very physical. He always comes up against taller and maybe more athletic opponents, but he just gets the job done. He's a very, very important player in this Giants lineup. And there's a few more important players in that lineup. And Lynchy, you're going to go through the sides. Yeah, certainly. He's a massive player, very important one. But there's a number of very good players in great form. Tom Scully played his best game last week with 32 disposals and the goal. And you go Phil Davis, a really good job on Tommy Hawkins. He'll have another big job, possibly taking Buddy Franklin tonight. Ryan Griffin, two goals and 32 disposals when he went head-to-head -head with Patrick Dangerfield last week. A lot of criticism about the Sydney Swans heading into this year. Were they using the ball well enough? Did they kick it well enough? Well, the midfield is up and running. The forwards having Franklin fit and firing and the, and the other two big blokes, Tippett and Sinclair, complimenting him so well. And I love the fact there's a couple of real quality youngsters that have come into the lineup. Namely, uh, Papley, for instance, up forward, who I, who I think looks absolutely sensational, and also Hewitt. Really like what they're bringing at the moment. So the captain for the Sydney Swans, Kieran Jack, moving out to say hello to Phil Davis, the captain of the Giants. They're using a special 25-cent coin being tossed as part of the official Anzac coin collection from the Royal Australian Mint, only available with the Sunday Telegraph and other News Corp newspapers from the weekend. Great way to remember and celebrate the Anzac story. Well, we spoke about Shane Mumford a little earlier. Or Barry Hall uh, had a chat to him pre-game and uh, he's had a look at the impact he can have. He's going to have to do a lot more than just some big tackles, Lynch, because these two blokes were dynamic last week. Yeah, and their forward running uh, Ruckman, like can certainly tip it and Callum Sinclair, very dangerous kicking the seven goals between them last week. But what they'll do as Ruckman, they will spread from the stoppage and push forward very aggressively. And what they'll be trying to do this week will make Mumford defend inside his defensive field. So it's going to be a great contest. I think we'll see GWS. They'll use young uh, lob in the ruck a fair bit if they get on top of uh, Mumford. Yeah, and I reckon one of the things Shane Mumford has to keep in mind is don't be too defensively minded. Yes, the other guys will try and go forward and kick a goal, and he's got to be aware of that, but he's got to try and do the same thing. When he gets the opportunity to push hard forward, go forward and be that attacking threat. Yeah, there was plenty of uh, publicity, obviously, about his tackle last week, but his real damage was done with his clearance work yep. and his contested ball work. He leads the way. He's got a number of very good midfielders in there to help, and uh, but he is the barometer for this GWS side. And being the next Swan, the Swans players know very well that uh, he's going to be the man to stop. They haven't beaten him yet, but you feel like they're inching closer and closer to breaking the seal. 
Well, certainly that uh, big win they had at the start of uh, last year, or two years ago, Sorry. 2014, but uh, to, at the SCG, yeah. this yeah, is where yeah. they've got to turn things around. First 15 minutes, we'll get a real indication where the GWS are going to bring that same passion and pressure as they had last week. So the ninth battle of the bridge about to get underway at the SCG. Most publicised and anticipated battle of the bridge we've seen so far between these two teams. And we're underway. Wobbly bounce to get us underway. Shield tried to get it to half forward decisively. Rolling ball. Laidler gets there. Grundy. Richards. Bangs it wide. The most experienced swan out there. Puts it out on the full early. Maybe some nerves early. It's a big afternoon at the office for these two teams. It's a great little win for the Giants early, just to put enough defensive pressure on to create a turnover. Richards hurrying the kick, didn't have time to find a teammate, just threw it on the boot. Now they get a chance to pump it forward. Mumford, Patton, Lobb all down there forward with the height thump to the back. And this is where they're extremely dangerous. Both of these teams are actually in their forward 50 stoppages. And especially when you've got a player like Stevie Johnson lurking around here, we know over a long period of time, this is where he's very dangerous. And Stevie Johnson lurking in the goal square, tip it straight down, Parker. Back to tip it, smothered. Dumped. Griffin swings it around, it bounces across the face. And that would have been the perfect start for the Giants. Phil Davis has expected with the job on Buddy Franklin. He's been in outstanding form the first couple of weeks, Davis. Oh. Lloyd. A little murmur ringing around the crowd. They might be a little disappointed with this crowd. It's not a full house as they expected. Adam Good's doing the lap at half time. They expected it to be chock a block for that. Pat full. In the scramble, Lloyd goes back. Parker dangerously. Kennedy got a hand free. Jack, and now they're out. McGlynn. First game of the year for him. Pokes it to half forward. Couldn't find a target with it. Poor Wilson. Shaw. His brother also doing a lap at half time. And the three premiership stars that are we doing that. Oscar Nillia. Oh. Dangerously. And Davis. Right on that. Thank good you. hands there. <laughs> that was one of his most important contested marks that he's taken, <laughs> Phil Davis. Shaw turns it over to Rampy. The nervous boys out there. Here's Franklin. First chance for him. Now that's mm. interesting. He could have marked that. Yeah. He just misjudged the length of the kick. It's actually hit his legs on the foot. It has. Or he, he was it, looking to let that go past yeah. and then turn and run onto it. Yeah, he couldn't have a sore lower back because he did not <laughs> bend at all. Oh, there's a real edge to this at the moment, though. How important it is for both teams. Griffin. Richards. Well, the reality is the little brother from up the road is just want to put one on the chin of big brother at yep. the start of this game. Stevie J overcommitted there with Smith. Got him plenty of space to work with. Tippett drops back. Good spoil away. Papley. And a roadblock. Ward. Kelly. Davis. Cornelio has to feed back and get it. Kelly. Griffin. Not a lot Shield. of pressure coming. They had plenty of time there. Two on one for the Swans here. Grundy. Sinclair. Smith. Rampy. They've actually done well, the Giants, to get their zone across. Franklin. Davis. Franklin! Oh. Phil Davis, I think, for most of that contest, was pretty happy with his positioning. But uh, great work, great reach by uh, Buddy Franklin in the last half a second just to grab that ball. Been nothing wrong with Buddy's form this year, but you just feel like there's a massive breakout game coming to really announce himself. He was stalking the 50 in the warm-up, Lance Franklin. Chess was out. Big stage, his stage. And blows it. Just a big pull early. Keith Shaw didn't have, uh, he's been in great touch, all Australian and best and fairest winner last year. Didn't have a big game last week. From memory, 15 disposals off halfback. Kennedy short. Not only their experienced players to stand up in the heat here 
yeah. at the SCG. It's heat in two ways. Of course, you've got the team that owns this ground, plus it's about 25 degrees out there. We'll check with Barry Hall again a little bit later about how hot it is in this fading sun. Shield long. Well, it's interesting. Mumford's pushed forward to the goal square, and Tippett's gone all the way with him. Ward looks up. So it's a one-on-one -on -one ahead. Mumford, Tippett. As Jason Dunstall told you, that ricochets out. Just not sure that's the sort of kick he was looking for. Shane nah, Mumford. Not ideal like for that. Just sitting up in the air. <laughs> Ex-Sydney Swan, of course. 79 games. Premiership back into play. Mumford against his old team. Whitfield, centering kick. Grundy in the hole with his body on the line, as he so always does with brilliance. Lloyd White. Dumped away by Court, got into the ear of Sinclair. Yeah, just reaching over the shoulder on that occasion. Good closing speed from uh, Core. Parker. Oh, Chatting earlier about uh, players in good touch. This man is playing as well as anyone in the competition at the moment, Parker. Well, it's interesting, Lynchy. Both, both sides, their midfielders have been really good in terms of form, but no one's locking down on each other. They're going head to head. It's what we want to see. Yeah, although yeah. we've got two aerobic beasts going head to head, as you say. You've got Scully and Hanbury running together at the moment. Are they going to cover some territory? Robinson just off the bench, thumps it inside 50. Big fist from Patful, knocks it to the deck. Hanbury, Heaney, tip it. Oh, there's that terrible. roadblock. Big <laughs> Mummy's got another one. Now, well, yeah, what hope did Kurt Tippett have there? Zero. And realistically, the reason Mummy's in the Giants jumper is Kurt Tippett. So I think he was re <laughs> repaying that uh, little gesture. A bit of cop this. Yeah. Yeah, we'll talk about that during the course of the afternoon. But, yeah, they needed the trade. They needed the salary cap room. Tippett and Franklin coming to town. And the Giants pretty happy to have a guy like Mumford in their lineup. But what I love about what Mumford's done, and, and even the one they're talking about last week, he's not cleaning blokes up with bumps or, or shirt fronts or anything like that. He's tackling them. Yeah. We had five last week, so it wasn't a one-off. <laughs> Stevie J getting his first touch of the afternoon, close to the boundary, McGlynn. And is that a free? Yeah, just um, swinging. I thought he was just a little overzealous there. Yeah, that's not what Heath Shaw needs to be doing. Sits it on Hanbury's head, shield with the fist. Quickly to Scully. Grundy, that's one slip. Green comes at him. Good tap from Grundy. Oh, Richards waited. Jones, Grundy. That's the second on time. The full. Second time we've seen that sort of kick out of defence from the Swans because of really good forward pressure. Now he paid a mark there, didn't he? Ben McGlynn ran off the ground yeah, instead, of, it. instead yeah. of going to the contest. That's mm. extraordinary. He saw the ball and ran off the ground. Some players, when they're spent, Lynch, it's just head down, get to the bench as quick as you can, and <laughs> they tend to zone out, don't they? Just queuing rack. <laughs> Williams. There's a late inclusion with Buntine out. Sits it up long. Mumford's down there, used his body. Lob got a hand on it. Richards. Scoop the handball away. Hanbury, Smith. Oh. Robinson. Kennedy. Franklin all the way up to the wing now. Keeps it low. Hart for Cunningham. Turnover. Sure. Look away handball to Smith. Green. He thought about what he was going to do with it. Johnson. Sinclair wrapped up. So a goal to start here at the SCG. Well, have a look at this one. Big Mummy. As we said, there's been a uh, tip it came to the Sydney Swans. Mummy went to the GWS, and that's a big, strong tackle by the big man. Very fair, very solid. Cornelio, Ward, back to Cornelio, turns it over. Rampy. Really well read by Dane Rampy. We spoke about midfields going ahead to head. It's five to zip in terms of clearances in favour of the Giants, so they're on top early. Yeah, they were on top of Geelong as well last week, and the clearance is very good in that aspect. Wide to Park. Oh! Sky high. And he's Polak's the teammate. He's Heaney. landed on Isaac Heaney. Franklin's gone on with it. The crowd want the replay. Hewitt sees it run out and will get a ball in. That is just a spectacular mark. Heaney's he went gonna... straight up, <laughs> twisted. Have a look at this. Took it clean as a whistle. But look at the way he lands. 
Oh! Ho, ho. It's taking the wind out of young Isaac Heaney. That's a great grab from the form player of the competition. Better than landing awkwardly and breaking his own leg again. That well, would... the, the physios want to bring Heaney off and he doesn't want to come off. Mm. They finally won the battle. Rampy long. Franklin off hands. Williams had a piece of it. Shaw under some pressure. And Green was waiting for it right there. Right time. Cornelio under some pressure. Scully, everybody under pressure. Smith bombs it long. Patton, first chance to go at it hard. Richards right with him. The flick. Always got Grundy with him, Richards. Still the congestion. Richards. Mitchell. Grundy to the open side, and they should be out here. Lloyd. Smith. Franklin's calling for it long. And he holds up. Now he's on the move. Davis wraps him up. Franklin, one, two, three. Not control, though. Davis bangs it away. A roller towards the boundary. That might be deliberate. Teddy Richards could have gathered that, but the oh, AFL says that under the new law, you don't have any obligation to go for it. But there's, a, there's a Giants player trailing by five metres, chasing right. it. Oh, we know the ones that are obviously deliberate. I don't think that was deliberate to get it out of bounds. It was deliberate to get it out, out of the back defense, line. Out of defence, absolutely. Yeah. Which I, is vastly different. I think the kicker has an out too. If you kick it to an opposition player and he just lets it roll out and doesn't even attempt to pick it up. I mean, Richards could have let that roll through his legs. Yeah. Mumford. Patton comes up hard again. Great spoil. Parker, good tackle. Smith. Kelly. Got to open up some space. Cornelio. Trouble. Scully to <laughs> Whitfield. And made it Hoskin Elliott's problem. Good tackle though by Hoskin Elliott. Keeps it in the area. And a goalless first 10 minutes here at the SCG, but it's a good contest. And as we see, Hooney is up and about. He's probably just winded from that midsection shot from uh, Parker, but uh, you cop that with a mark like that. Robinson tackled as he gathered. Perfect conditions for football. The half-back line for both teams are on top. Uh, Davis and Shaw with five disposals each, and Richards and Grundy leading the way with seven and six for the Swans. Mitchell screws it around the body. A little cautious at the start, but Wilson marks it. Shaw, the delivery man. Good delivery this time. Kelly. Yeah, pick three. They've got so many of these early picks that have grown over the course of the last few years. Fifth year in the cop now for the Giants. Inside 50. Ward couldn't complete the deal. Jack backed into a high one. I think going on with that, Dwayne, I think there's about 14 first round draft picks out there for the GWS and the others are the, the likes of uh, Ward and, and Griffin and Stevie Johnson. Yeah, high expectations this year. Fifth year in the competition and we've seen them mature before our eyes. This is a big afternoon for them. Heaney, one of the young swans, lob at the back. Kelly. Never won here at the SCG. The Giants, they've met eight times, these two. Sydney, seven. Giants, one. They're one winner, spotless. And there's the Parker grab. 13 to five, the tackles. That would please Leon Cameron as much as anything. Jack. Extra man back is Patful for the Giants. Couldn't get there. Well, he did get there for the second attempt. Sport his own man, Williams. Davis read that well. Patful. Cunningham hassled him out of it. Kennedy looks for Heaney. Puts it over his head. Ball rolls out of play in front of Williams. And you can hear a pin drop here at the SCG. Yeah, just waiting for this game to break, break mm. open. Plenty of pressure on the ball carrier. And uh, it's just bouncing between the, the half back lines for the respective teams at the moment. Yeah, it's silent. And yet the atmosphere is thick. It's a great stage here at the SCG. Parker taken to the boundary. Get a ball in. And this is the place that the Giants want to finally make a mark. Lost round one, horrible loss to Melbourne, but a big win last week against Geelong, who are coming off a win over the Premier's Hawthorne. Hard to know which form is the correct form. You'd think it was last week. Franklin, Parker, sidestep was good. Hamble, not so good. Steve Johnson, 
Bangs it down the line. Richards is there. Too good again. Very experienced Ted Richards. Just moved Shield under the ball. Smith got it out to Rampy. Jones. Straight down the spine. Through the hands of McGlynn. Kennedy. Scully. Green. Kelly. Where it goes again. The kicks inside 50 just aren't hitting the targets at the moment. Probably a lucky free kick. Inside 50 count is 8-4 to four in favour of the Swans. As far as the game is, the ebbs and flows of disposals, not too much difference, but uh, what a pressure being applied by the Giants. Yes, yeah, you sense that Leon Cameron would be the happier of the two coaches right now. Scores level. Away from home, Giants have held up pretty well in defence. Kept that alive to his detriment for a second, Whitfield. And well, that was that's that's deliberate. Deliberate. deliberate against Laidler. Yep. That was as deliberate as you could possibly uh, see. And Laidler's actually saying, arguing. Yep. I can't see how he could possibly argue. Have a look at this. Knock back in and then oh, smacks yeah. it over the fence. Yeah, I thought it was already out when he did that. I think <laughs> Whitfield. That's the only thing he can be hanging his hat on. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I think what he's also saying, though, is when the ball's up in the air, you're allowed to punch it out in only, a contest. Only in a marking contest. Correct. Johnson. Knocks it down. Nick Smith bangs it away. Franklin's got a couple to beat here. Used his body. He's got three to beat, in fact. Whitfield. So Davis behind. Whitfield. Griffin. That's going to be a great contest. If yeah. Griffin continues his form from last week up against one of the premier midfielders in the comp again in Josh Kennedy. Great contest. Had a huge game last week. There's, there's a pressure gauge and... Uh, Sydney minus 19 at the moment. The Giants are leading the way. And takes it out of the air, Tippett. What a barrel. Oh, splashed it. Patful, half held, ball to the back. Franklin lurking on his left. Opened it up and kicked across the face. It's probably a win for Sydney. Stays in their forward pocket for a ball in. Well, have a look at the stoppage do dominance here in the Sydney Swans. Uh, points from uh, clearances, 60 points, number one in the competition. But their young brother from up the road, the Giants, ranked two with 48. Mumford after a relatively short ball in. Jack rolled in that tackle. Sinclair likewise, and we'll get another ball up, but a good spot for a ball up here for Sydney. 17 goalless minutes to start up an intense contest between these crosstown rivals. Kelly caught from behind, floats it wide, Grundy and Scully. Scully did well until he handballed it. Jack short, just the required 15, only Justin Mitchell can have the first deliberate shot at goal. There hasn't been too many chances. Uh, needs to just apply some pressure to the Giants by converting this one. Tom Mitchell, another player, through that uh, very deep Swans midfield that's been in great touch as well. The best start to a season ever for him. Missed the first five games last year and he threads it and breaks the deadlock. Yeah, classic arm wrestle. You think it's been pouring with rain and uh, very windy conditions with the score, but uh, the pressure applied from both teams here. Tom Scully gets back on the ball, but just misses the target with a handball. Trying to go back to Cornelio, but missed. And then the Sydney Swans with that sort of class. Hits a short pass inside. And very important today for anyone who gets the opportunity to convert them. And Tom Mitchells was right on target. Oh, off the ball, Stevie Johnson just goes to ground in the forward 50, I think, playing up a little bit of contact, looking for a free <laughs> kick. Umpire was right there, didn't pay anything. So Mitchell's numbers last week. The ball up, Mumford dive forward. Kennedy scooped it out. Back forward by Mitchell. Oh, and courage. Back with the flight again from Kennedy. It was terrific courage to come across the pack. Didn't know what was coming from the other direction. No long lead coming for sure, that's why he stopped. Goes wide, hoping for Smith. And Cunningham is allowed to punch it out. That was a marking contest. Have a look at this. Great comeback with the fly of the ball, as you said, Jace. Great courage, good mark. Just to repel another inside 50 for the Swans. Up to 11 now. One-on-ones around the ground. Cunningham flicked it out. Kennedy. Sinclair, 
Kennedy kept it alive, touched. Davis will be told to keep going here. It's under him, and he got one for too high. Oh, he sure took off and realised I'm in strife here. Correct, and then <laughs> ran out of bounds. That was ridiculous. He's lucky to get away with that one. Uh, not allowed to handball there, according to the umpire. So it'll come back to Davis. Umpires Robert Gorman, Simon Meredith, Sean Ryan here at the SCG this evening. Sun fades on. An absolutely delightful day. 25 degrees, long towards the wing. Lobs down there. Rampy with the fist. Secondary fist into the congestion again. Hoskin Elliott. Green. Ward. Shielded well. Opened it up. Well, Got runners well in the middle. That's an aggressive kick. Bouncing ball. Heaney and Williams. Steve Johnson there. Heaney. Found space where there wasn't a lot. Rampy. Short pass, Sinclair, Cunningham, Frank Lamont's it long, he's running back to the goal square, Cunningham didn't strike it well but it might still get to him, on the bounce, Davis hunts him down, got him, good pressure, Davis back in, second error. Well he might be in trouble here Davis. Dragged it in, yes. dragged it in. I reckon Frank Lamont have dragged it in under him as well. Well, yeah, uh, yeah. you see players do that but one, it almost gives you a licence to hold it in underneath, as soon as the player drags it in, and uh, you just got to hold it in as best you can. Very difficult when you're lying on the ground to ignore the footy when it's right there, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. The ball's up for grabs. Phil Davis has reached out with one arm to grab control of it. Then he wanted to, to take possession and handball it away. But as soon as he pulls it back yeah, he's and then it doesn't get it out, he's gone. Yep. And Buddy pulled it in yep. the second yes. time. Yeah, so nice that's work. Very nice play. Lance Franklin, you'll hear a massive round of applause here from directly out, but close to the man on the mark. Coming back. It's there. And he's got that look in his eye. It's interesting, even though they've kicked the only two goals of the match, you wouldn't say Sydney's on top of GWS. It's just that they've had the execution a couple of times, made something almost out of nothing. Now, there was a turnover that resulted in the first goal, and that time then it looked like they'd mopped up and they were going to clear the Giants, but unfortunately... Phil Davis in his desperation to get the ball <laughs> dragged it in initially and then it's his responsibility to get it out and you can't just throw your hands out and say I haven't got it because you're the one that dragged it in. <laughs> Bit of a head rub from Buddy Franklin on Phil Davis as well when he uh, knew he got that free kick so pretty happy with it the big bud. Four minutes from quarter time Mumford with a slap down Parker Scully jumped in Cunningham jumped on him. Dunwell, the Giants, but a big three minutes 49 coming up here to quarter time. Parker around the body and another good mark. Conclusion, Zach Williams gets an opportunity to make the most of it. Yep. Spear, a great hit. lob. It's a guy I've got a lot of time for, Lynchy. Yeah. Huge wraps. Rory Lobb. Looks at, like he can take a great mark. Yeah, huge wraps. Very competent in the ruck as well. Ward to Scully. It opens up nicely. He might go for home. Goal square all the way. Just offline. Just feel the Giants need to score one before quarter time. Yep. If they concede one, it's a big loss. Lobb just a little touch on that. Kennedy goes back. Grundy back in board. Danger. Laidler dumped. Rampy dumped. Devin Smith. Oh, he's handed back. Green. Yeah, yeah, holding the ball. Gee, they're around the mark, though, GWS. I've loved the pressure that they've put on. They've made it so difficult for the Swans to get the ball out of their defensive 50. Kennedy. And again, you can hear a pin drop here at the SCG. Majority of the fans, obviously Swans fans, as oh, well. Ward drops in the hole. Fearless. Knocks it to Whitfield. The sure wasn't the option really. Is that an incorrect disposal? Yeah. He's had an air swing. It. Well, he fumbled it, then he's tapped it. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was unusual. Anyway, thirteen plays two. They've had thirteen to six inside fifty Sydney, but it feels like a lot of the ball's been down this end of the ground. It hasn't and it hasn't been deep, but deep entries at all. Phil Davis off the ground, so Aiden Core's got the big job on, buddy. Well, one thing they do have to do is they're going to have to rest players, particularly those that are playing on Buddy. Oh, Steve good. Johnson's given another silly one away. Yeah, that 
He can do that. They don't need that. No, they didn't employ him to do that. Oh, he's cleaned up too. And they're all trying to get up quickly, but Jack is away, and they've got the loose man. Heaney, Tippett feeding back to the goal square. Still running back, Tippett. Papley sees now, short pass, back at the kicker, thumped away, free kick. And it's a Swans free kick. Canterbury. Oh, oh, this isn't good. That's the byproduct of the mummy contact. Just starting to flex their muscles, the Swans now. Chung Kaur going off the ground with the left knee. And there's plenty happening off the ball. So Oscar Elliott pinged for that fly and attempted spoil. Superstars, wherever you look, the Sydney Swans. Dan Hanbury, the AFL's best when he's at his best. Sixth in the Brownlow, All Australian a couple of times. But he blows his chance here with 148 left. It's a lot, a lot happening off the ball. And Lynchy, we know for a fact that GWS are very good at giving it out. Yeah. And Sydney players just wanting to assert themselves. Yeah, and that'd be partly on the back of what happened six weeks ago. It was only NAB challenge, yep. but... Uh, the Giants really took it up to the Sydney Swans, and the Swans, realistically, they were asleep that night at Dremoyne Oval, and uh, they were belted off the park by the Giants. So, the more experienced team of the Sydney Swans really looking to assert their uh, their dominance early in this game. As you can see, Aiden Core just getting his left ankle assessed, so we'll keep an update on that. And they wouldn't want to lose him as one of their key defenders. That would leave them short. Mumford front spot. Ball to the back, though. Lloyd Smith drives it long. It's under it a little. Could have gone for the mark. Wilson got fist on it anyway. Still stolen. Robinson! That would have been a little painful for the Giants to cope with that with one minute left on the clock. It's almost just getting to the stage now. The Giants have to hang on. Oh, Tip there's it. a turnover. Can't do things like this. Cannot afford to hand them any. And they're in the game, just not on the scoreboard. That's the problem for the Giants at the moment. Going 20 points down at uh, quarter time is not where they want to be no. when they've worked so hard. Kurt Tippett knows this is a huge opportunity here to land a blow. Inside the last minute. For the only three goals of the quarter across the face. And a huge reprieve there for the Giants if they can get away with not turning it over in this last 33 seconds. Mumford, not normally your designated kicker. He's normally the one you want on the end of it. I've got a suspicion this might be long down the line. Sits it up wide, lob comes at it. Grundy an early leap. Four giants around the spill. Stolen by Lloyd, chip kick, Franklin! <laughs> Needs to be cautious here if he plays on the siren sounds. It won't count, he plays on. Back to Franklin. My work in his favour. 13 seconds left. Whitfield. Now Roller. That's probably deliberate. You cannot play that deliberate. Oh, come on. Yeah, he had no time and he just threw it on the boot under pressure. We're, we're just we're going overboard with this. Yeah, that, He's just getting that out of his area because he's about to be tackled. Big Mumford. Got a knuckle on it. Took it out. But you could cut it with the... This is amazing at the moment. It is. Great pressure. pressure. Out there. And pressure on the umpires as well. The yeah. umpires predominantly are very good with that one. I just think they've uh, made a couple of blues in the first quarter. It's interesting it's because there's talk about adopting the South Australian model mm. of last kick or last handball. That's what it would be like. Oh, there's no debate there. <laughs> <laughs> the Giants have never won at the SCG. And a tough start for them away from home. In the ninth Battle of the Bridge, Steve Johnson having a few words with the scoreboard says the Swans have well and truly won the quarter. 2-3-15, the Sydney Swans, the Giants, two behind. No bigger stage in Sydney than the SCG. The Giants have never won here. They've come to the SCG with more hope this afternoon than perhaps any of their previous travels here. And they stuck with the Swans for the first 16 minutes. But the Swans with the only two goals of the quarter, 2-3-15 to two behinds at quarter time. Fantastic to have your company wherever you're watching around the land. Jason Dunstall, Alice Lynch, watched it unfold.
What did you like most and what didn't you like about the opening quarter? Well, they got themselves in the contest, uh, GWS. Their pressure's been great. It's been interesting watching Stevie Johnson do what he does best, and that's get under the skin of his opponents as much as possible. He's always looking to try and draw a free kick. He wants to box, and then he takes the dive, looking for the, that free kick. But he's always trying to make something happen, Lynchy. Yeah, absolutely. Very dangerous around the forward half, but... This is what the Giants don't want him giving away silly free kicks. And we just saw as the uh, quarter time the siren sounded, he's uh, having a bit of a fracas with his former Geelong teammate and Jeremy Laidler. And there is some he heated words being said there, that's for sure. Let's go down to the Barrenger line with Barry Hall. Yeah, thanks, Lynchy. Well, Luke Parker has certainly carried on his good form. He had 11 to that quarter. He had eight contested with player. But it was interesting enough, he's taken most of his disposals in the back half. So it tells you that GWS are getting their fair share of the play. They're not getting inside 50 and using it efficiently enough and hitting the scoreboard, but they are getting a fair bit of the ball forward. Luke Parker's, Luke Parker's certainly stopping a fair bit of play from GWS's point of view. He's been a key playmaker for the Swans and setting up some scores, but he's been a fantastic player in this first quarter. And just a quick update from an injury front. Aiden Kaur has had that left ankle taped. I would expect him back on the ground very, very soon. Murray Hall downstairs. Can't afford to lose one early. The Giants back in the middle. 13 points the margin to start the second quarter. Shield got there first. Slick handle to Williams. Missed him really. Banged inside 50. Franklin down there. It's a two on two. Patful jumps. Ball to the back. Dangerous. Short. Can he drag it oh. through? He left it. Papley kept it alive. And Shield was there waiting for it. A scully. They dodged an early bullet there. Maybe not yet. Still alive inside 50 for the Swans. Williams. Scully. Griffin, now they're out. Johnson. Oh, high risk kick from Scully back into the corridor. They got out of jail. Patton hasn't seen a lot of it yet. Doesn't see it here. Smith steals it back again. Inside from Lloyd Parker. They're off and running. Kennedy. Hanabry. It was a little bit too easy, wasn't it? Stevie J was desperate for a lead. He was looking for an option. He was waiting for Patton to get away from his man. And Patton looks like he... Uh, was holding his arm there at one stage, but he just needs to find a bit of separation from his opponent so they can deliver the ball to him. Dan Hanabry, the press home disadvantage even further. For a three goal to nil start. Struck it pretty well. He's got it. Uh, the Giants will be very concerned about this because where all the damage has been done is their forward half turnovers. Yep. So defensive half for the Sydney Swans. They're turning the ball over on the back of some poor kicking inside of the forward 50 or the forward half at least. And then they're flying forward quickly. It was the same issue in the fourth quarter against Geelong last week where Geelong got on a roll, kicked three goals and were back in the game. On this occasion, there's the Sydney Swans, and they're just not giving the Giants a chance by converting these opportunities over the last 10 minutes of play. Top disposal winners, as we just saw then, on the ground are all Sydney Swans players. Starting to really dominate. Mumford and Tippett both got a piece of it. And they'll have to do it again. So Luke Parker up to 13. He had 40 against Collingwood in round one and 29 against Carlton last week. Playing superb footy. Chipper put the palm down and had a clearance of sorts. Ward, Whitfield, good run off half back. Williams got it off to Shield. Now good Short pass, Scully. This is the one. No one in the square. Devin Smith, normally a good goal kicker. Hits the square, Canelio plays on to advantage, and they've got their first. And they're in the game. It was a much needed goal for the Giants, and I'm absolutely positive Devin Smith was having a shot for goal. He just didn't <laughs> strike it. Didn't strike it the way he wanted to. I loved the inboard kick from Dylan Shield. That opened up options, a chain of hand passes. He's trying to kick the goal, and in the end, it worked out all right because Canelio was down there, and he did very well to play on quickly and finish. Zach Jones just in a little bit of difficulty, but I think he's up and OK. Yeah, he's wrapped himself around the post, Zach yep. Jones. Good work from Cornelio to play on. Fifth, that... fifth season for Stephen Cornelio, another of those that have grown before our eyes. Big year for him. 
Mumford attacks Tippett. And they keep this momentum running, the Giants. Jump off him, Sean. Thank you. It's interesting with Core off the ground now. Patfield's playing as the second tall on uh, Sinclair at the moment. Good battle, Mumford and Tippett again. Shield caught by Kennedy. Full 360. Has he tried hard enough to get rid of it? No. Well, at least they're consistent. I like the way the umpires are rewarding good tackles. Whether the players had um, prior opportunity, I guess, is up for debate, but they're being consistent. Oh, great what, run. He can play that, though. He can seriously play, <laughs> Dylan Shield. <laughs> he can. So Whitfield, can he complete it? With the pass to half forward, ball over the back, Cornelio, the goal scorer, on his left. Lob, oh, race yeah. quick. He goes over Lob's head, and Armour can slot two within a minute. Well, they had three options. They had three yeah. options in the middle, but that is a beautiful kick. But you go back to the, the kid you said he could oh. play. He can play a bit, can yeah. he? come out of the midfield, oh. Dylan Shield, put a fend on and got it out into space. Great work, great build-up. He's got amazing evasive skills. Sucks in the deep ones. Experienced campaigner knows how critical this is. Gives them their second in a minute. And now we've got a game. And the major difference from what we've seen the last couple of minutes to the first quarter was the ability of the Giants to hit targets in their forward half and carry the ball. They've been able to spread quickly from the centre or half back and run the ball into their forward 50. This is a first-class pass into the corridor, whereas, Jace, as you said, there are plenty of options there. Pick the right one. So Cornelio's had a very uh, important hand in the last two goals, and that is a beautiful kick on the left, left slipper. Straight back. Here we go. Silence at the SCG. Two goals in a row to the Giants has done that. Mumford in the middle. Hearts are racing here now. Green. Mumford. Caught. Good tackle. Dispossessed. Mumford hasn't had a clearance as yet. And that is, as we spoke pre-game, one of the really important parts of his game. Ball locked in there. Five clearances last week. Thanks, guys. It's just what the game needed, isn't it, the first couple of goals yeah. for the Giants, because it's tightened things up again. We knew they were in the contest in that first uh, quarter, even though the ball's being played in Sydney's forward half. Looking at those numbers, they're... Uh, Quick transition, though, by the Giants. Well, they have got that speed to break, haven't yeah. they? And they'll try and counter-attack on the Swans all day. From the flick down. Mitchell did well. Lloyd... Smith stands up, bangs it inside, 50. Williams gets there with a fist from Patful as well. And Hewitt can't get away from the clutches. A good spot for a ball up for the Swans. You just feel that the Giants probably not as physically de developed through the midfield. They've probably got to spread the ball wider, whereas if you play through the corridor, it's going to go into the hands of the Swans. Any had a piece of it, then dropped it. Goes back in and gets it, tries to barrel it out. Touch play on the call. Tippett wasn't 15 anyway. Well played, Callum Ward. He saw Whitfield running for him, and he has a panic. Hewitt's going to try and shut him down. He has another bounce. Palmer's working hard. One on one's ahead. He goes for the Palmer one on one. And a mark taken <laughs> by Mills. <laughs> this is, just to remind everyone, he's played three games. Yeah. Well, this is his third game, young Mills. The uh, Sydney Academy player. Pick three they got him for. Gets the half forward. Robinson. Hanabry. Kurt Tippett. The fist. Patful again. Knows where to shark it. Core is back on. Got a handball back again to Davis. Parker. Good airtime there. Hanabry could go for home. Top of the square. And Davis content to let that roll out. Not sure he knew how much space he had, Dan Hanabry. He could have run. Five metres inside 50 and had a shot. It's Bill Davis and Kurt Tippett. We speak about ex-teammates before. They're ex-Adelaide Crows teammates from a few years ago now. Mumford, Sinclair. 
Whitfield got his hands free. Green outside of the boot. Rampy and Cornelio. Cornelio wraps him up oh, and he dropped that. This momentum has changed here. Yep. And hasn't Cornelio been significant in the early stages of this second term? Great tackle there. And saw the ball placed on the ground, which obviously is incorrect despite disposal. To the wing. Hanabry with the crumb. Lloyd feeds it back. Nick Smith. Stand start. A smother from Steve Johnson. Ball flicked back. Mills. Lloyd. Everything under pressure now. Touch play on. Whitfield. Little handoff. Williams through traffic. Now they're Green did again. well. Oh, they're in Now Steve Johnson. No one's in the square. Will he go for home? Oh, kick. Centering kick. Patton gets back. Such a good great the kick. weight of the yeah. kick from Stevie Johnson. And let's not forget, that's on his opposite foot. That's his non-natural leg, the left foot. How good was that kick? He looked over, identified yep. exactly where Jonathan Patton was going to end up and just put it lace out in front of him. Didn't have to break stride, the big fella. I love the fact that he didn't try to kick the miracle goal. He knew there was one decent option. That was Patton and he was good enough to hit it. Do you think he considered the miracle goal yes. first? Uh, yes, <laughs> but he did the team thing and I love it. Yep. For three goals in a row for the Giants. After being goals for the first 17 minutes here. They got here late, but they've kicked the door down since. Well, the other thing we shouldn't underestimate is what that is going to do to the confidence of Jonathan Patton, who desperately yeah. needed that just to get himself into the contest. He had found it incredibly difficult in that first quarter, and uh, Ted Richards had been doing a particularly good job on him. And this time he's able to break away, whether it's Grundy or Richards, and, and at different stages he'll probably have the two of them. He's got to find a way to have that sort of impact. That was outstanding. He looked over, then composed himself and just flushed it out in front of Patton. Great work. Have a look at Stevie J. His record over the last couple of weeks in both occasions, round one and two, 23 disposals and two goals. And they get the clearance. They could take the lead. Green, long, goal square. Mumford's resting down there. Fist toward the boundary will do. Mills, body on the line. She's got a good body strength, Grundy. He matched it with Mumford. Yeah. There, kept him on the wrong side of the contest, made it impossible. Probably giving away 15 kilos as well. Yep. Dylan Shield involved again. Had a huge uh, second quarter so far, five disposals. Lob doing some ruck work, knocks it down. Good tackle laid by Kelly. Well, they're the ones that are starting to get on top. You spoke about Whitfield's at 13, but Shields is at 11, and Scully's had 10 as well. And they're all runners. They're all blokes who run and carry the footy. So very important they're starting to get on top. It's a good show of strength there from Heath Grundy. Short throw in. Sinclair. Well, he didn't really mean to do that, but he was trying to keep it to a teammate's advantage. If you have just joined us, First 17 minutes goalless, no goals to either team. Swans kicked three goals in a row, and now the Giants have hit back with three goals of their own. One point game. Mumford with a flick down. Kennedy handballs it out wide. Mitchell, fantastic smother, and might get his own ball green. Good spot to hit with a centering kick. Grundy bumped in the marking contest. So clearances in this quarter. Uh, 5-3 in favour of GWS, or 4-3, in favour of the Sydney Swans, sorry, but it's the quality of the ball that, come, that is coming from the clearances. They're putting pressure on Sydney when they get it, but uh, running into space when they clear the ball. Oh, Lob turns it over. That Straight was, to Papp. He, he thought he had someone there and then tried to pull the handball at the last minute. It and was a lob. And now it's danger. Patful lets it through his grasp when he was bumped in the marking contest, even though he couldn't mark it. And Shaw is off and running. Mumford is down the wing. Goes shorter and he turns it over. Just off the bench. Parker towards Tippett. They, they had extra numbers down there. And then Heath Shaw's gone the shortest one, which was a Sydney Swans player. Extraordinary. Mumford was 20 metres over the back by himself. But you like the way the Giants are taking the game on. Sinclair again doing the ruck work. Lob right with him. Knocked it down to Griffin. The one-two, the shield, the shimmy, gets away, looks up, sees Robinson, takes them all on. Whitfield. To the pocket. Hard chase, Hoskin Elliott got there and content. 
to see it out with he, Jones. He's turning it on Dylan Shield in this he second is. turn. And that's a classic example of another quality clearance. So that was half back. They get one or two quick handballs and burst into space. One of the great strengths of Shield is he has this speed that buys him time and he, and he looks so effortless the way he just glides across the turf. Lob does the ruck work against Sinclair. Jack acts it clear. And this is a massive kick coming up for Williams. Centering oh, yeah. ball, delightful ball, and Scully can give the Giants the lead with four goals in a row for the quarter. There was some finger pointing uh, yeah. from the Swans defenders. Who was there? Tom Scully, just to reinforce, he's 35 metres out in the centre corridor in front of goal. That was extraordinary. But up the ante, the Giants, and Sydney haven't responded. Big kick for Tom Scully, yeah. not a strong part of his game. Never ever going to kick it after your Mazda, would she? No, I actually said it was not strong. But that's, that's where yeah, I mean, his work rate yep. is elite. It's just probably his finishing is just holding him back a little bit. But certainly, as we said, last week was his best game for the, uh, for the Giants. And the touch ball, good smother. Sucked a bit of the life out of the Giants, that miss. But we're back to where we started. 21 apiece, scores a level. Well, there's no uncontested ball for the Sydney Swans. Every time they try to kick or hand pass, there's a Giants player there putting pressure on. Tip it with the palm down. Lob gets it back. Lloyd. Oh, it's holding the ball. He took close. a long time, Parker. Little push to the back of Richards. That's a push in the back. It'll be downfield, a Swans ball. So Shield will have to give this up. He's a bit stiff to go on Shield. He thought he was having a shot for goal. Just to <laughs> add another uh, stat to this quarter. That's chocolates to bald lollies. Yeah. Instead yeah. of having a shot for goal, you just stand on the mark. Oh. Nick Smith. Oh. Lance Franklin. Yeah. Rare touch for the quarter. He's pushing up the ground, searching for possession. Pat full front spot. Got hands on it. Williams a piece of it. Heaney a piece of it. Stolen by McGlynn. Franklin, he's on his left, centering kick, hits the spot, Shaw gets back, puts it to grass, and Sheil a splendid tackle. Well done from Heath Shaw, to, at least to attempt going back, Dylan Shiel once again. Shiel and Scully, let's have it Dylan Shiel's. Middle of the ground, aren't they? Yeah, middle of the ground, back, but working very hard from deep defence right up to the forward line. Lob gets his own clearance, it rolls outside 50. Jack went to McGlynn. Well, he ducked into that and he was fortunate, but it was high. Back, back. Look at the blood rule here. You can see he slips. Yeah, he slipped down. That's what draws the high contact. Got a knee in the ear. How much Toby Green could do. The umpire say Scully's coming off with the blood rule. Just wait, just wait. You tell me when. You gotta wait. There's a blood rule. So you gotta wait till the player that replaces him gets back into position. And that'll be Shane Mumford, who, uh, who should be heading straight down to the goal square. And they should not start until he actually gets there as well. Not exactly a like for like. No, but they have to wait for him to get to whatever position he plans to get to. Well, surprisingly, he's not going Strange. to the goal line. McGlynn sits it up for the leapers, tip it's down there, Lobb got a knuckle on it, Davis at the back, clever kick, Keneally got a touch on it. He's not going to pay that to me. No, <laughs> no, they were appealing for it, Franklin wanted it. They're getting a little bit optimistic now, <laughs> some of the Swans players, but here is obviously going out that way to his teammate, but he just thought, I better dive and get a finger on this just in case. Tip it with a double hander, Hanabry couldn't break away, Green does, found some space, little tap by Mills. Open space behind it, the Giants can get it through. Steve Johnson gets it back to Devon Smith. Now by DeShiel, another possession to Green, and now the space. Sydney getting players back. Johnson, oh, yeah. look away, handball. That's his forte. Trouble. Loved it. Whitfield caught. Nick Smith, delightful tackle. Well, the trouble is the look away hand pass. He kept running away as well, and he left him one out against two, and there were no other Giants teammates that could get over and help. And the handball went two metres behind Whitfield. Just had to, if you're going to make the mistake, make the mistake in front so he could Come run down. onto it. 
That full lurking and spills it across the line. He's a handy inclusion, uh, Joel Patful, into the team this week. Hasn't uh, played senior footy this week. Here's the tackle from Smith. Just wraps up Whitfield beautifully. He's done very well there. Leon Cameron not happy at all, but Patful comes in for Marchbank, who'd probably been holding him out of the side. 199th game for Joel Patful as well, so 200th coming up next week. Umpire says that's ball. The ball in. Giants Knock ball. They're led by a point Knock early in this game. The Giants. No doubt they're on top in the second term. They are clearly on top. And Reese Palmer gets there. Good slide in, Mark. Good body work from uh, Lobb just off the ball to hold Grundy out. Out of his range here. The dangerous one will be long to Lobb. Floats one to the pocket to Griffin. He's within range. And this might be within his repertoire. It's actually a clever Come kick out, from uh, Palmer because he didn't have any long right. options. Yeah. If he had have blazed away, right. it would have been mopped Don't up by it. the Swans. Nice right, right. foot fade here. Thank you. He does swing, does swing the ball a fair bit too, Ryan Griffin. So this might uh, help him quite a bit on this on this particular angle. Be hard when you run Give sideways run. right. Yeah. Just wanted to just give him an extra couple of degrees <laughs> behind the barrier line. Tom Scully just getting that jumper off after that blood rule, and he's got the <laughs> the tape around the ear holes as well. Not overly flattering. For the first time since the opening minute, the Giants are in front by a point. Grundy drives it down the line. Sure. Oh, they sport each other, the two Giants. They mucked that up, the Giants. Yep. Tunneled out. Papley put his head down. Went and got it. Kick smothered. Ricochet. Hanbury's got a couple to shut down. Kennedy. Shield. Clever. Williams. Dangerous, but it might come off. We've got numbers. Green with Mills. Mills. Read the bounce to perfection. Parker caught. Flicks it back. That was well done by Parker yeah. to get rid of the handball and a tackle. Mills long. Tip it inside 50. Off hands. Patful. Dives in, scooped it out. Williams, intense contest this. And Kennedy, of course, of the Giants variety. A couple of Kennedys, a couple of Smiths out oh, there. Trouble here. Yeah, ran himself touch, into touch, trouble. Touch, Bangs into the midfield. Richards read the bounce. Mitchell slams it on the boot. Nice Early block. left, Davis. And, block. and the block is played and 50. And 50. 50 for arguing. Little, yeah, a little bit of dissent, I think. Yeah, a little cook to the umpire. But Which is just frustration because, you know, a small player thinks he's held space, got rid of the bloke, taken the mark, but still been pinged for uh, obstruction. What gave the umpire the, the indicator? We'll come back to that in a sec. Long kick. Inside 50. Slam back out. Griffin should get there first. Had to wait for it. Robinson cuts him down. He just had no awareness, Ryan Griffin, there. I think he thought he had plenty of time and space. But there was someone right on his on his hammer. He suggests he got the hand pass away. Tackling pressure from both teams has been first class. Right up there. Right from the opening minute, the tackling pressure's been there, but the intensity has gone up a gear in the last seven or eight minutes. The Giants with three goals in a row. Parker back inboard. Robinson. Franklin hasn't seen it for a while. Sets himself at Davis. Got a hand on it. Mumford. Oh, Davis. Trouble. <laughs> and it bounces Callum Ward's direction. And Richards plays for the free and gets oh, it. Oh, he gets it. No, he's pointing the wrong way, the umpire. It is a Ted Richards free kick. But he was forward of his mark, so he wasn't allowed to play on. Clever from Teddy. Nearly got away with it. Every player on the ground within a kick of this ball, and he goes short. Big fist, Kennedy. Put his heart on the line there. Well, he's done that a couple of times. Yeah. He took a courageous mark in the first turn. And I was about to say, really poor from the Giants, because Wasn't no it? one had cut off the leading channel for Franklin, but Kennedy was the one that spotted what was going to happen and knew he was going to get poleaxed. From the ball in, he could easily Griffin. Pop the shoulder out there. Oh, yeah. Ward to Kelly. Confidence growing at the moment for the Giants. Patton leads up. A bit of separation on that lead. That's what he's got to do, Jonathan Patton. Give them that out kick. Move it on. Now he's got to wait Move until he gets the bailout kick along. Dangerous that's, kick oh, this. Oh, that's risky. Jeez, a good one, though. Oh. Yeah. Would you do it again, though? Uh, of course. <laughs> Perhaps not. The well, risk-reward, risk I don't think, was in your favour. Sure. Oh. 
because all they've done is chopped it to the other side of the ground. If it went bad, it was a goal to the Swans. Whitfield, he's got Mills cutting him down. Gets there. Hold the mark! <laughs> Worked it from one wing to the other, but they spread the Swans' defenders out. Floats one towards half forward. Grundy in the box seat. Fists it down, but straight to Shield. Sidestep was clever. Looked at his options. Callum Ward. Thumps on the boot. Stevie J. Body contest. Smith got there first. Kennedy. Caught. Rolled. Back to Smith. Caught. Rolled. Kelly. Caught. And we'll get another ball up. Well, we've got a classic example there of a player that's just not at his physical peak in Stevie yes. Johnson. He started a metre or two in front. Nick Smith just picked him up in the lead and almost went past him. Kennedy in board. Robinson. Yeah. Oh, torpedo. Oh. Franklin in the one on two. Can he get there, Lance? He's a one on three. Wraps up short. Did he go for the boundary? Throw it in, says the umpire. I'll be happy with that actually being paid as deliberate, because it was, rather than the ones in the first quarter. He's under enormous pressure, but I think he'll be pretty confident he deliberately got that over the line. This is a phenomenal contest at the moment. The Crosstown rivals, head-to-head. -head. Giants have never won here at the SCG. And right now, you sense they know it's there for them if they're good enough. 3.43 left to half time. They were down by 13 points at quarter time. Mumford with the knockdown. Tippett, oh, second effort. Right. Hanabry. Jack. Got a lot on it. Goal square. Two on one. Shaw, can he take it through? Patful. Off the deck. Cunningham. Free kick. Free kick's been paid here. Yeah, I think it's Patful, is it? So Patful's free. The Sydney Swans fans. About to, it just kicked in now, Dwayne, when the booze started. And the Giants have dodged one there. Very lucky, just a bit fumbly deep in their defence. A bit going on off the ball, Heaney and Core going in. Laidler with a fist, Hoskin Elliott got a fist and Laidler feeds back onto it. Rampy tries to find some room. Lob got hands on it, he off hands on the left. And still no joy for the Swans. Just the ebb and flow of the uh, game. Here's the free kick to Joel Patful. He's so he got this for the throw to the ground. Just oh, touch and go. Yeah, yeah. Whether it was it, did he get rid of the ball correctly or was fumbled out? So uh, very tight decision that one. You sense there's an epic growing here. Two fifty-five left. Scores level. Driving ball to the wing. Hoskin Elliott got a couple to beat, can't beat them both. Mill stumps it back towards attacking 50. And Tippett floats in from the side. And a chance to give the Swans the lead back. And that's one we spoke about pre-game. Tippett's actually playing in the ruck. Mumford was the defender on him. And just pushes himself into the forward 50 and took a really good mark. So that's uh, the plan from the big ruckman. Probably week in, week out, really, but certainly up against Big Mummy. It's interesting here, he's only 35 out, he's kicking from. Instead of going back to the goal line like Mumford's virtually gone deep, I'd rather him stand the mark, yeah. make him kick the ball high, make yourself as big as you can on the mark than let a, a smaller player stand on. Cool head, Swans back in front. A yeah, great contest in the middle of the ground. Uh, two vastly different ruckmen in uh, Shane Mumford and Kurt Tippett but just see the ball from Mills once again the the two game three game veteran who spears the ball in towards Tippett jumps gets away from Mumford Mumford's just not used to getting in that contest as a de defender and uh, Kurt Tippett once he gets those arms up really hard to defend against as we've seen over the last few years his uh, kicking has got a lot better in front of goal To the most publicised and anticipated Battle of the Bridge yet. Living up to expectations. Back in the middle. Mumford against Tippett. Callum Ward can't break free. Got it out somehow. To Devon Smith. To Kelly. Drives it wide. Palmer in a race. Jones. Palmer. Jones gets there first. Palmer wraps him up and rolls him out. 
he's, he's adapted his game so well, Reese Palmer. He's going to get a free kick here. Well, he's drawn that. 145 left. This would hurt. He goes top of the square. Patton's down there. Grundy outread him. Then let it slip. Patton, hand, Devon Smith, bump. Hanabry, caught by Whitfield. Taken back. Callum Ward, experienced hand, oh. makes them pay. Oh, and their skipper, Callum Ward, <laughs> Leon Cameron. He's nearly jumped out of the box, I think, through frustration to start with, but then with the great work of Callum Ward. There was a free player over the, the top if the handball went quickly, but Callum Ward here, as he's done so much over the last couple of years, stood up when it counted and intercepted that ball, and great snap on his non-preferred left foot. Just the answer to Kurt Tippett's goals. Just what the Giants needed. Callan Ward, his grandfather captain the Swans, Bill Gunn back in 55. And here he is trying to make a statement on the SCG himself. Scores level again. Tip it with a thump down. 123 left to the half. Momentum with the Giants right now. Clearances have swung way back in favour of the Giants in this quarter. It was dominated early by the Swans, but 10-9 in favour of the of the Giants now, but it's all come the last 10. Tip it to full forward. Sinclair down there. Hewitt gets a chance at the crumb. Wrapped up, not high. Ball up. Still things happening yeah. off the ball. You can see something later in this game will, will blow up. Big few seconds. Hanabry found a gap where there wasn't one. That's brilliant. A couple of goals in the second turn for Dan Hanabry. He just put his head down. Attacked the footy and just fashioned a kick as he had the head down running forward. Squeezed it through. That is an opportunist goal. And that's a score from stoppage that coaches do not like happening if you're the opposition coach especially red time yep. <laughs> red time goal i think he's backed himself in there he's going to go in hard and low and he's either going to get high contact or find a gap found the gap it. 51 seconds left to half time back in the middle mumford and sinclair lob's gone behind the ball so a spear in defence at each end now. 49 seconds left. Rampy's the loose at the other end. Tossed in the air. Mumph with the palm. Griffin couldn't quite get away with it. Lays the tackle on Parker. Holds him up. Down to 42 seconds. Still time for a score at either end. Swans have got an extra man back. Defensive goal square waiting. Hewitt turns it over. Oscar Elliott. Scully. And there's the spare man oh. waiting all on his own. That's a classic case of players when they don't have anything, they just kick it as far as they can. Still a chance though. And it was a really poor option from Scully. Whitfield looks up, goes to the pocket. Steve Johnson, early leap, unrealistic leap, and it's a swan's free. Yeah, I reckon it's been a while since Stevie J jumped <laughs> on someone and hung up there for about five seconds, which he needed to do to mark that one. He did. I don't think he even touched touch early, him. didn't he? Did he touch him, though? Oh, a little bit. Yeah. Not much. Was not, not much. in it. Didn't take him out. No, not a lot in that one at all, but Stevie, yeah. He's, he's pleading his case. Yeah. <laughs> well, the stage is set for a big second half here at the SCG. Long driving ball towards the wing. Mumford's marked it. Second should beat him. Won't have a chance to send it inside 50. The ninth battle of the bridge. The Crosstown boys have never won here. Never won at the SCG, the Giants. They've met eight times overall. I do have one win, but that was a spotless. But this is the biggest scare they've given the Sydney Swans yet. Outstanding run with the momentum in that second term. Kicked three goals in a row, stole the lead. But the Swans have got it back at the half. Sydney Swans by six at the long change. Let's head back to you, Ed. Thanks very much. Dwayne Russell calling all the action there tonight at the SCG, and what a game it is. It's tight, hard, in-close football. 
And the Battle of the Bridge is an absolute belter tonight with Dan Hanbury kicking two in that second quarter to give Sydney a one-goal lead. So at uh, half-time, it's 5-4-34 Sydney to 4-4-28 at Greater Western Sydney. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll have a look at the other matches today. St Kilda victorious in their celebration of their one and only premiership back in 1966 over Collingwood. And as well as that, Adelaide's demolition of the Tigers. We'll have a look at those two games right after this. Sun fading on a beautiful afternoon here in Sydney at the home of football in Sydney. The SCG, no stage bigger. And for the Giants, and for this man, Josh Kennedy, against them. It's a massive stage in the second half. Well, it's an impressive uh, average set of stats every time he plays against the Giants. And no surprise to tell you he's halfway there again. He's had 13 possessions, four clearances, nine tackles already. So he's certainly doing his part for the Sydney Swans. But he needs a few mates to jump on board or they might find themselves in a bit of strife because the Giants have got a liking for this one. If you've just tuned in, whether you are in New South Wales or around the country, the story, if you don't know it, these two teams have met nine times. Giants have never won here at the SCG. And they were down by 19 points earlier in this game. And they fought back to be right back in it with a three-goal run in the second. Kennedy, Parker, Swans get the clearance to half forward. All over the back. Papley started in the early couple of rounds. Didn't strike that well. Heaney almost marked that. He had a fair chunk of it. Yeah, fingertip it just off the deck. Did extremely well. Tom Papley, just the five possessed today. He's got Heath Shaw all over him at every opportunity he gets. And even after that contest, Heath Shaw was in his ear, gave him a shove, said, I'm all over you. Goals have been hard to come by. Early momentum's going to be huge. Franklin ran into the roadblock. Mumford then dumped him and oh. gave him a free. And a big smile from Mummy as well. And Mummy stood over him. He might actually <laughs> trip and just fall on Buddy Franklin, no doubt. Hands it off, Williams to a one-on-one. -on -one. Hatful, Cunningham, Reese Palmer dragged down by Jack. Good tackle, dispossessed. Anybody's ball, Kennedy turns into Scully. Boy, oh, that could oh, be ball, throw. he throws yeah. that away. Good, really strong, good tackle. Yeah, good strong tackle from uh, Tom Scully. Good first half. Went off for the blood rule, midway through that second term. Taking the mummy tape off, which he'd be happy with. Yeah. <laughs> Heads wide. Kennedy. Griffin working really hard for him. He's found a yard. And Great he's in front kick. of Jack. Delightful kick. That's a superb kick from Kennedy off yeah. half back. And you called it early, Jase. He, he ran 90 metres to get to that. Sends it to the goal square. High bomb. Hatton was down there. And off hands. Reese Palmer. Perfect start. That is great work from Reese Palmer, but also go back to Jonathan Patton. Now, his major role is to provide that big contest at the top of the goal square. He's not going to mark it all the time, especially in the heavy traffic. Now, watch where he goes to. Pa what Patton has to do, he has to make a contest, has to get it to the front. So he does enough to stop the Sydney Swans taking a mark or clearing that congestion. And Reese Palmer, as he's done so well over the last couple of years, was front and centre and snapped the ball beautifully. Predominantly a defensive forward, but he can kick goals. Couldn't agree with you more, Lynch. He fought so hard for front position Patton to yep. make that contest. But that is just a classic Crummers goal. And you sense the belief is there from the Giants players now. Griffin gets the clearance. Back to Kennedy. Scrambles it to half forward. Lob under it. Good float in and a mark to Laidler. Saving grab. Straight down the middle. Good Parker. Vision. Good vision. We've got numbers wide. Plays on quickly. McLean, Canterbury, normally a good finisher. Under some pressure here. Misses near side. Uh, that would have been a brilliant goal if he had to finish it off. The left-hand hand pass from Parker. <laughs> Outstanding start was brilliant. Oh, and here's one of these cases where you've got to go back and get the original ball. And just the good work from Ward. Like Hanbury sort of was having that pressured kick, but it was Ward's pressure just to get a hand on him. So he had to rush it and didn't have time to steady. Griffin. 35 plays 34. Started this quarter very well, Griffin. Oh, he sits that on Franklin. Got a hand on it. Couldn't bring the mark down. It was alive for him. Sure, good feed off. Oh, Smith yeah. to the back of Scully. Not quite the collect and run, but he's good enough to get it back again. To Lobb, to Kelly. 
Fortune favours the Brave again. Reese Palmer, a central kick. Now they run. Green's calling for it. Patton's calling for it. Straight through Green. Straight through Patton. Goes back. And Richard sees it out. Well, he was trying to create something, Reese Palmer, and he just shanked the kick. But what about the inboard kick? Aggressive. It was Josh Kelly, was it? He just smoked it in the middle. It was, it was Kelly. Not the spot you want to turn it over, but it was perfect. Temperature starting to drop, starting to get a little bit dewy down here, boys. Barry Hall on the boundary line. It's getting hotter out there, though. You can sense it. Parker. Swans are under more pressure than they've ever been against the Giants. Shaw crunches it down. Scully got a handball to the back. Papley tries to reach in. Shoveled back out. Pat full. Smith. Franklin. Bang. Gang tackle. Drag down. Ball. He took him on. He tried to crash through. And the Giants were having none of that. Bill Doe's and Tom Scully in this tackle. Great work from both Giants players. Griffin on the way back, though. Franklin oh, has a tackle of his own. Oh, he squared it up here. It looked like he handballed the ball, Ryan Griffin, and that was what he was saying to the umpire. Yes, he got tackled, but he, he dribbled a hand pass out. Parker received the free. Back to McGlynn. He's got it. Heads wide. Cunningham with the fist. Patful. Slick hands. Sheel again got that out to Wilson. And sure, their hands in tight have been really good. The quick, hitting the target. What's, what's troubling the Swans the most is the Giants have got too much run for them. Yeah. And to combat that, it means the Swans have to win a lot of ball, and they're not winning enough. Teddy Richards. He's been doing that for a half a dozen years, Ted Richards. Most experienced player out there for the Swans. They're going to need his cool head in this last half. Robinson, delightful use. Grundy bangs it. It's a two-on-one, though. The two for the Giants. Hapful knocked it down. Wilson, ugly handball. Mumford made it look okay. Gives it back to him. And Green couldn't mark that. Little oh, toe by Grundy. Yeah, well done. Smith. And just out of the reach of Kurt Tippett. Oh, it rolls away. That hurts. That was an opportunity. That just reinforces the pressure that's been applied by both yep. teams here. That was a pretty simple kick, but the pressure, not having the awareness of who was around you, uh, missed uh, tip it by 10 metres. Sinclair with a flick to the back. Hanabry on the move. And it's on the full. Great work. Wilson started well with four disposals for the Giants. Parker once again with Hanabry three apiece for the Swans in this term. He's at 22, 12 contested possessions and five clearances. He probably hasn't been a better player in the first three rounds, Luke Parker. You mentioned Wilson. He kicks that to Steve Johnson. He goes to ground and kept that alive in the area. Kelly back to Johnson's feet. Stolen by Kennedy. Got it to Parker. To Lloyd. Pokes it to the pocket. And again, Wilson's the mop-up man. You're on the list a long time. Joined in 2011. The 17-year-old Nathan Wilson, fifth season. He's been around the mark, just hasn't been able to play consistent footy. Big season for him now. Scully hits wide. Lobb's got a couple to beat. Teddy Richards. Back inside, 50 to tip it from Lloyd. Superb. Yeah, yeah, great hit from Jake Lloyd. That's one of the few times, and it was two, two times in succession, that the Swans forced the Giants just to kick long door contests coming out of defence. Instead of changing direction and running and identifying short targets, they actually had the kick to where uh, the situation didn't really suit them and it created the turnover and they need to do more of that city. Swans have led by as much as 19 points. The biggest lead the Giants have had is one point. Again, they've been close for five minutes and Tippett can't give the Swans the breathing space he expected to. That's on the full. He's missed everything. This is a lot. The inside 50 count is extraordinary. And talk about the quality of the ball going in. It's 41 to 20 in favour of the Sydney Swans. And yet Plus it, yeah, 21. Yeah, and it doesn't feel like no, that, though, does it? certainly it? does not. I tell you what, they might need to go in twice as many times if they're going to miss shots like that. Scully, again, a brave kick. Doesn't come off. Parker. Lloyd's in the middle. Whitfield wraps him up. Another delightful tackle. Holds the ball in the area. There was no prior, but that was perfection there. I'm going to tell you, Dwayne, I was critical of GWS in week one against Melbourne. They didn't want to tackle. They wanted to play outside pretty footy. But last week against Geelong and again today, their tackling and pressure has been first yeah. class. 
Cornelio tries to scramble a kick. Lobb had it, stripped of it. Scully through traffic. Callum Ward dumped. And that's why it's hard to know which form to believe. They did beat Geelong, of course, this team. And Geelong beat the Hawks. Franklin tries to cut Wilson down. Long kick. Grundy cuts that off. Yeah, Patton went back. He had to go forward at the ball. Jack, oh, somehow. How good was that? Some magic. And it opens up. Well, he's got 20 metres, Mitchell. Mitchell sends it long and Isaac Heaney. And that was a really clever kick. Now, he had to uh, tip it one out. He had a couple of other options. But what he saw with Isaac Heaney was Heaney's opponent had his back to play. Yep. Zach Williams had his back to the football because he, he had lost contact with Isaac Heaney. So he just kicked it in the general area knowing that Heaney would react first. Still only 19 years of age, just his 17th game. Isaac Heaney, he's the future. And they get that breathing space. A nice bit of work. The Giants are working hard, but Probably even more so, the Sydney Swans with the defensive pressure that caused those turnovers was what caused that goal. And as you said, once the, your defender has got his back turned to the ball, it's always going to be very easy for Heaney just to drop forward and take a pretty easy mark in the end. And here it is, off halfback. Here's the run, chased by Franklin, put a bit of pressure on, but this is the turnover. Patton had gone back. That was the big issue. Great work from Kieran Jack here to find Tom Mitchell and then use the ball into that forward 50 first class. And speaking of, Parker up to 24. Back in the middle, Lobb doing the ruck work now for the Giants. Later, good tackle. Mitchell flicks it out. Williams. Swans will be top of the ladder, undefeated tonight if they win. Three from three. Uh, what a difference in their psychology. They're beaten by the Crosstown rivals and Franklin bursts his way clear. Heaney's the man. Under it, couldn't take the mark. Slapped away, Whitfield. Quick play on to Patful. Caught by Cunningham. Did he try oh, and get rid trouble. of it? He's, he's gone. Trouble. Kennedy gets the free. A bit of seniority, Josh Kennedy, because Cunningham was involved in the tackle as well. Wilson, dangerous ball, straight to Sinclair, and the recruit drives it through. A little bit uh, experienced defenders know where to spoil the ball, and that got good fist contact onto the, the long ball into the forward 50, but it's gone straight into the corridor. So here it is. So this is with the right hand. It had to be with the left hand straight into the corridor and that can only be danger and uh, Sinclair was good enough and in the right position to pick it up and have plenty of time to shot it through we see more and more of that these days big blokes staying down but then becoming the crummers yeah. and actually reaping the rewards what that does just reinforce there's no spectators anymore Ruckman used to just either yeah. sit under the ball mark it and get out of the road as a defender though Wilson would have thought gee that felt like a good spoil yeah. And then you're horrified when it goes straight to the opposition. Getting any money's worth of that clean swap with Jetta, Callum Sinclair. Having a good season. Green tries to keep that driving for the Giants. Griffin knew he had a runner inside, couldn't find him. McGlynn, Heaney, they've lifted their rate, the Swans. Oh, talk pass. And it'll work. <laughs> and race out. Happily. A left foot round the corner, talk. You don't see that too often. Come a little bit of a cult oh. hero, Tom Papley. Thumps it to the pocket. Flyers go up. Hewitt had a piece of it. And it rolls out of play. Not sure why Tom Mitchell was trying to fly over that pack. You'd rather no. see him getting front and square. I know Luke Parkin can do it as a midfielder. Here's the third quarter disposals. Wilson leads the way because he's playing back there in defence. And that's where the game's being played at the moment. All left of screen. The forward 50 for the Sydney Swans. Cornelio Slick to Scully. To Kennedy. To Shaw. Callum Ward. Right. So just to reinforce, the Sydney Swans are plus 25 yeah. forward 50 entries. Yeah. And we need to keep an, uh, an eye on that because yeah. that is the sort of discrepancy that you just don't see in games of football. Certainly not ones that are close. Uh, that's right. And at some stage, they're going to convert those opportunities. Yep. Kennedy to McGlynn. Little tap was delightful. Lloyd, can he finish it off? Jack's chance from a stand start. Struck it well. Not well enough. 
Well, the one thing that was unlucky about that passage of play is when it finally got to Jack, they needed a right footer who could have just yeah. played on and kicked it. He had to turn back into traffic to get on his natural foot. Davis has some space, and he's got Devin Smith out wide. Hugs the line. Jonathan Patton comes up. That's well done. Not surprisingly, the Giants have just tried to take the pace out of the game a little bit, try to arrest control of the ball. Whitfield gets into Kennedy. He almost marked that. Stolen by Green. Almost legged. Plays on. Griffin. Who's he got? Oh, deep. Streaming back to the square. He's got a couple. He goes short. No mark, Scully. No free. Hard to pick up on that occasion, but he had a player at the top of the goal square. Just had to go longer, but very hard when under pressure. Back into play. Mumford front spot. Jones makes a somebody else's problem. Sinclair. Got, got numbers here, the Giants. The tackle by Court. Five on two. Devin Smith. Still trying to flick it around. Cornelio, Whitfield, oh, Kennedy. Sorry. Outside of the boot didn't work. Patful stands under it. Did well because the Swans are away. Had they got that out? Good tackle. Kennedy on Parker. Now they are out. One on one. Mitchell slams it forward. Hewitt's down there. Davis as well. Knocks it to shore. Just had the experience. Phil Davis. He knew he had a teammate coming back. Just had to control the footy. The run by Scully again from behind the ball to get into space. He works hard. Giant down behind play too. Got Patton on the lead. Has not moved. Might be Kennedy. We'll keep like an Aaron eye on that. Kennedy, yep. Yep. Right. We'll go down to Barry Hall shortly for an update. But Patton about to send the Giants to full forward. Unless he sees Whitfield. He drives it. Mumford. That's He's over down the top. there. All the way home. Oh, that's a goal from nothing. Oh. That was a long bomb from Jonathan Patton. As you called, Dwayne, Whitfield had come on the ground and gone to the 40, 40 metres out in the corridor, but Patton didn't see him, but he's absolutely flushed that one. And good work from Mumford on the goal line just to hold his opponent out. That's a big drop punt. Hold his opponent under the ball, and that just sneaks through for a really important goal. Momentum was starting to swing, or certainly is starting to swing, against the Giants, and they needed that one. Outstanding goal from Jonathan Patton, his second. That's what happened to Adam Kennedy, and he's come off. He just copped a hip to the face. Might have had a little bit of blood flowing from the nose, and they're just trying to address that on the boundary line, but he looks okay. What about the attack of the ball? Luke Parker yeah. again. Outstanding contest. Hope you're enjoying it wherever you're watching around the land. Jack, the captain for the Swans. Sinclair feeds back. Davis, big fist, knocks it down. Mitchell. Oh. He would have thought he'd kick that on his right foot, the natural left foot of his. Yeah, he had Opportunity a, goes begging. He had a chance there. Phil Davis is developing into a really good defender. He left his man yep. there to kill that contest. It still gave Sydney a chance, but he's really improved in those one-on-one -on -one situations. That's and a concern. This is the other concern, yeah. I was about to say, Jase. Uh, the lower back looks to be an issue for Dylan Shields. He come off a short time ago. We'll keep an eye on that one. That could be big. Yeah, he's a player they cannot afford to oh. lose. Franklin spills it, but Hanbury keeps it alive. Richards, rare shot at goal. Maybe not. Oh, his eyes led up, Didn't Teddy. Didn't know what to do. He thought, oh, <laughs> I'm at the wrong end here. <laughs> again, oh, again, though, how quickly do they close you down, GWS, their pressure? And the tackling has been intense today. Yep. Oscar Elliott White. Patton comes up, makes a contest on the wing. Crumb is going to be crucial. Jones goes inboard. McLean just out of his reach. Oscar Elliott. Cornelio, Papley, stand start, pokes it, Heaney, fantastic collect, Mitchell, gunned down by Johnson, play on advantage, Wilson oh, down the middle, Palmer. he's got Palmer inside 50, getting their rampy up, got a fist to the back, Patton, Laidler, Laidler can't run this out, he got a little help. Once again, great work, at the other end of the ground by Stevie Johnson to lay that tackle, we spoke about him at half time. Great tackle, but then Rampy to leave his opponent to get over and spoil that one. And that's how they're hurting Sydney. GWS is that quick counter-attack rebound football where they just open them up going the other way. Nine-point margin. Hanabry dragged down in defence. Scully feeds it out. 
Johnson sized up the big sticks, he wanted them. Smith, unselfish, goes inboard and Mills floats in. Put a nice little sit on him. Worked out beautifully. Well, he hasn't been playing six years. No. Yes. <laughs> Henry Long. Here we go. A couple. He wants to take them on, Lance. Oh, good luck. Williams is right with him. Heads toward Hewitt and Shaw. Out, read him again. Too experienced. They could play and the other way They are too quick, GWS. Oh, Whitfield fumbles it. Put Green under pressure, but he's good enough. Feeds it back. Williams to Whitfield. Have good delivery. He could go for home. Centering kick. Unselfish. Laidler. Johnson. Too high. Johnson tried. I think he tried to be careful there coming in, but he's quit Jeremy Laidler. As we said, there was plenty between these two at quarter time on the siren. Yeah, just talk a yeah, little bit of blood there. We're talking about leg speed, there was a time when Lance Franklin would have just tucked that under the arm, That's had three bounces and kicked yeah. the run. But Williams had the leg speed to chase him. And then the kick went forward, and it was Heath Shaw that had too much leg speed for young George Hewitt. Yeah. And then they rebound quickly, and they create opportunities at the other end. They've got serious leg speed, and they can move the ball quickly. Well, that's where, obviously, contested ball and clearances are really important, but that's where they're going to hurt Sydney, on the outside. So Steve Johnson's off with the blood rule, but Laidler's got blood on him. Is that Johnson's blood or Laidler's? It's well, an interesting one, isn't it? Well, it must be Johnson's. It must be in the clash of heads. He's wiped it off, so... It doesn't look like he's bleeding, which means he's allowed to remain on. Thumps it wide. Sinclair, lob, Sinclair, a hand on it. Kennedy, not quite. Stevie Johnson. That's three free kicks against Johnson today. But just in the lead up, really good tackle at the other end of the ground. Griffin to Green. Well read. He's dropping into the hole, Ladler again. And now they peel for him. And he ran himself into trouble to Hanbury to get him out of trouble. Back to Ladler. Caught. Parker should float in. Kennedy's away in some space. Franklin's short. He'll get ignored. Tippett's the target. Over the top. Patful. Got a hand on it. Hewitt and Shaw again. And he's away. Hasn't got a lot on offer, has to wait for an option. Shield runs hard for him. He's got Reese Palmer long. It's in his direction. Rampy, Palmer, Palmer, Rampy. Well, I've got no doubt that Josh Kennedy chose the wrong option, that last inside 50 for Sydney. He ignored Franklin because Franklin led too early. It would have only been a 10 metre kick. But if he had have done that, Franklin actually had the space to turn and then have a shot. And he ended up kicking long to an outnumbered situation. Franklin to McGlynn. Amazing contest this between these two. Long towards half forward. Shaw and Papnik in. Fantastic contest. Heaney caught. Kennedy sidestep delightful from 50 and too wide. Well, Lynch, you, you keep talking about the inside 50s, which is just ridiculous. They're going up. 53 to 23 as we see a little bit going on behind the ball here. I don't think there's too much in that. Body punches, jumper punch. Scully, is that deliberate? But just yeah. how do you how do you rationalise a 53 to 25 inside 50 advantage in favour of Sydney at GWS? Oh, big collision! Franklin's gone down. Tippett picks down. it up, still on the ground. <laughs> Callum Ward, action of plenty. Kelly. And the flip side is GWS has had more of the footy. Yeah. Shaw yep. Patton, delightful pick up on the scoop. Lob just as good with his foot skills. They're running harder again. So one team's had more of the footy, but the other team's gone inside 50 twice as much. That's extraordinary. Reese Palmer, he's about to be shut down. Oh, he wants his left foot too. He got it. Close to the boundary, Ted Richards. They just, just need to press something forward, don't they? They need someone to bring the ball to ground. Just marked too often. One-on-one, um, -on they yep. just need some presence up there to bring the ball to ground. Yeah, spot on, Baz. We saw it once and we applauded Jonathan Patton at the start of this quarter, but just not seen it enough. Hewitt got himself out of trouble there. And stays alive for Patley. Pokes it to the runner. Robinson gets there. Patful tries to turn him around. And he turned him inside out. Sits it on Franklin's head. Tip it, Franklin. Lance has got it. Yeah, and it's a good work by Tippett to body on body on Phil Walsh and allow Buddy the one-on-one -on -one contest. 
Oh, he nearly played on too. Yeah. Spot on. He just kept Phil Davis grounded just so he couldn't jump and spoil that one. This is his spot, isn't it? The right to left. Up, up, up. Fade. It's unusual for a left footer, the shape that Buddy Franklin gets. It's been a pensive, nervous crowd here for the whole afternoon and evening at the SCG. Haven't had a lot to roar about. They know this is a dangerous game. He but it's Franklin it. time. <laughs> Lance has come to the party. Well, you said it was his spot. I was about to say his spot's a bit further out, but that one didn't have much bend on it. No, it didn't, he, actually. He just threaded the needle. They needed it, Sydney, because they need to start getting some reward for all these in inside 50s. Plus 30. 55 to 25. Plus 30's unheard of. And there were only two kicks in front yeah. at that stage. Bizarre. Some really good work there, wasn't it, from Daniel Robertson. He showed composure. He didn't panic with a couple of uh, opposition players around him. Got the ball forward. Franklin the goal. Three times today, the Swans have had three kick margins and three times the Giants have come back. But Lance Franklin is lurking. Yep, and starting to get a little bit of the ball in the third quarter after a quiet second term. Kelly didn't really have it. Lloyd did, gave it to Parker. Turnover, Scully, the steal. Can he find a chest? Bangs a wobbler. Float. The chaos ball might work. Hoskin Elliott, Grundy. Green. Played it okay. 55 to 40. Scully up to 23. He was looking for that left foot, no doubt. Mm. Scunged it in on the right, but 23 disposals. And Luke Parker on 26 for the Swans, yep. the most on the ground. And Big Bummy dumps it back. <laughs> Enormous. Two minutes, 22 coming up here to three-quarter time for momentum. Swans have kicked three of the last four goals of the game. Callan Ward, the oh, flick down. Hit. Stevie J, look away. Scully, not bad off the boot. Touched on the line by oh, Grundy. Just probably worn out, Tom Scully. Just couldn't get that extra couple of metres to get over the line. Mills tries to drill it out. Williams is down there. Papley floats in. Wilson needs to be a good kick. It is. Whitfield puts it to grass. Shaw. Straight into Wilson. He went through him. Yep. It, was a, it was a hot pass. Everybody takes a breath. There's some tired players out there. The intensity's been up from the outset. Even if it's not a high scoring encounter. Mumford and Tippett. Both Brockman go at each other. Missed the ball. Tippett down. Mitchell scrambles one. Shaw, he's played well, Heath Shaw. Yeah, quite one last week, back to his very best this week. Callum Ward, uncharacteristic fumble from him. Well, it was, might be worth checking with Barry Hall. Baz, we're talking at half-time. Of a night, it gets a heavy dew here at the SCG normally. Yeah, as I was just about to say, boys, that the, uh, the temperature has dropped quite a bit, and it is a bit dewy, so you can forgive some skill execution. Might be great. Good palm down. Parker takes off. Didn't and look. Shaw in the hole again. He is mopping up everything he's Shaw. Coming up for possession number 24. He couldn't help it with that one. <laughs> it didn't move. They're picking him out. But he's done a job on a number of players, whoever yes. he's been on. Yep. He started on Papley and, and shut him down. And he's played on uh, a number of different players. He rarely been beaten. Yep. Steve Johnson gets it from Cornelio. We're down to a minute to three-quarter time. Gets under that a little. Mumford under that. Callum Ward probably feels he owes them one. Parts the sea, he's got a handball away. Straight to Jack. Turnover. Jones caught turnover. Whitfield. Scully. Wobbly ball to the top of the square. Grundy down there, lob down there. Spills to the deck. Reese Palmer keeps it alive. Hanabry. Laidler scrambles it clear. 30 seconds left. Heaney gets there, makes a contest. Good result. Takes it to the line. Yeah, oh. It's the body work of uh, Heath Grundy at one end and then, then the Heath at the other end. Have a look at those possessions. Everything that's come in his area, he has mopped up. 
24 touches. I just seem to go to change their forward structure, boys. I'd go pretty small. Try and get Grundy and Teddy Richards on, on small players and get them out of their comfort zone. Gee, Grundy's been good in his uh, body work against yeah, bigger opponents. I think you're spot on, Baz. Might have to just uh, get one of the big men, Patton, or lob off the ground. Franklin one out here, wants it long. Cunningham, ugly delivery, might still work. Over the top. Franklin long, turns him inside out and spills it. Dangerous seconds here for the Giants. I need to stop a late score from the Swans. Ball in the congestion. Williams to Wilson. Squeezes it to Shaw. Oh, and the well. siren sounds almost as good as getting a goal. That's off the quarter. Joel Patful, one on one against Franklin underneath the ball, did brilliantly. Don't go far. You might be watching some history unfold before your eyes. The Giants have never won at the SCG. The Swans at three quarter time lead by 14. They've let it every change, the Sydney Swans, but they've been under siege from the outset. Hit the only two goals of the opening term. 13 point margin quarter time, six point margin half time, 14 point margin three quarter time. Biggest margin of the game to either team has been 19 points. And it comes down to this. One quarter of football from the Giants get their first ever win at the SCG. 8.755 to 6.541. And that's the statistic that keeps punching us in the face, <laughs> Fiji. 56 inside 50s to 27, more than double, and yet the Giants have had more of the footy. They tend to run and carry, link up with hand passes, whereas Sydney just pump it long to a contest as quickly as they can forward. Yeah, it was plus 12 in that quarter of the forward 50 entries. Amazing uh, difference there. It's three goals, three to two goals, one. Yeah, we're, we're seeing it's a very different game. The game has been played in the forward half of the Sydney Swans, but when the run and gun speed on the outside gets going, there's some great ball carriers. Shields going well. Uh, Scully's had a lot of the ball, but hasn't hit enough targets. But they can, they're well and truly in this. They can really trouble the Sydney Swans if they run off the back. Yeah, they're going very, very well. It's going to take a big effort in the last quarter. Barry Hall is with their coach, Leon Cameron. I sure am. Thanks, Chief. Well, 29 less inside 50s, but you're still right in this game. Yeah, that's the disappointing part. Um, I mean, we're defending well down our back half, which is great, but we just won't make some really poor decisions probably coming out of our back half. And I'd imagine the forward half, there's been just too many uncontested marks from Sydney's point of view. Will you change that up at all? We're trying. It may have a little shift now. We're going to send Aiden Core forward, so from the back half to see if we can have a bit of a look. Good luck. Cheers. Well, that's interesting. You made a couple of very valid points, Leon Cameron. He said they have defended really well yeah. the amount of time yep. it's been down there, but they, and they have made a change. So Aiden Core goes forward. One quarter of footy left. The rivalry's genuine now. There's been a few media build-up rivalries before this. But this is the real thing at the SCG. Can the Swans hold on? Wilson caught by Robinson. Jack back with the run. Griffin steals it. Bangs it inside 50. Rolling ball to the oh. back. Was it touched? Grundy gets there regardless. <laughs> Not sure it was touched until that last minute. Our uh, last metre. Would have been a perfect start for the Giants. Of course, starting in the goal square for the Giants as well. Yep. Just struggled to hit easy targets, haven't they, Sydney? They've kicked to a contest nearly every time. And Laidler does here as well. Williams floats in, off hands. Wilson, the shimmy. Drives it back to the pocket, cores his target. Gee, got a good jump at it. He did really well then, Aiden Core. I'm sure Leon Cameron would have told him, go, start at the top of the goal square and we want you to present up, lead at the, every ball that comes into the forward half. You've got to attack the ball, really put pressure on the defence. Mumford, Tippett. Tippett with the flick down. Mumford stole it from him. Devon Smith from the pocket. Doesn't score. Frank will be excited too, eight four. When you get released from defence, instead of having to worry about a bloke, you just get to attack the footy for a change. You'll enjoy that. The migraine instantly goes. <laughs> <laughs> Wide ball. Tippett down there. Robinson floats in. Good grab. Great work from Tippett off the ball. Hanabry sends it towards Sinclair. Pat falls down there with him. The ball thumped out of play. Cautious start from both teams. They know how important this one is. 
Here it is, tip it off the ball, just puts the block on Mummy. And allows an easy mark in the front of the pack. Quick scramble, Grundy, did he hold it? No. Oh, nearly. Put it to grass. Patton. Shield, oh, he's hurt. Shield gives it out to Johnson. Oh, he's caught one. Might have got winded, I reckon. Bends it around, core, and again, Teddy Richards. He must have no skill on those knuckles again. He's caught one in the midriff, I think. Here he goes, just cops a whack. Yeah. Kieran Jack yeah. knocks stunning. the wind out of him. Callan Ward with a slap down. Stevie J tried the miracle. Might still. Steps inside. Caught holding the ball. Not quite as quick as he once was. Mills. A brave movement by the Swans down the middle. Rampy. Sinclair. Oh, the big boat wants it. Annabry. Kennedy. Jack. Slips the tackle. Slips a pass. Mitchell, Franklin short, lace out, he's got it, is he within range? Close, he's close. He is on his range, I'm not sure he ever shot, but... He'll have a shot. <laughs> He'll have a shot. We saw round one, he kicked one from out here. Well, he's the one that the can pies. do a couple of special things in the last term to help get Sydney over the line, and one of them might be a 60-metre bomb. See the concentration in his eyes. It's plenty on it, it's long. An inspirational wow. goal from their king. Well, they're the things you talk about that only a couple of players in the competition can do. That's something that is physically beyond most other players. And for Franklin, it can be a 60, 65 metre drop punt. And Mitchell just sized it up. He just had to get it to him. He got the early lead in, and then it was up to Franklin to work out how to get it through the sticks from out there, and that is just an unbelievable. This is what surprises me. Mummy was two metres off the line. If J Mumford's oh. behind that and jumps, yeah. that's touched. That's... So, want to celebrate the Buddy Franklin goal because it was outstanding, yep. but there was no defender jumping on the line. Patful no was end. grounded. Mumford was two or three metres in front. Had to be on the line. Should have started from behind the yep. goal line and then jumped at it. Equal biggest margin of the game to either team. Johnson caught by the ear. Now, now he, he ducks. Dropped into yeah. it. He yeah. ducks. So why does he get the free kick there? I think we're only weeks away from seeing that not being paid as a free kick. Well, they Dropping started. Dropping the legs. Yeah, they've started early year. They picked up a few of those ducks, but they're drawing free kicks again. To Davis, and he sprays that kick poorly. Nick Smith, he just keeps on keeping on. And they've got the experienced heads, the Swans. No one running for him. Giants have got all the early draft picks they've accumulated. Mitchell again, hard work rate. So Mitchell, 70 from goal. Kurt Tippett in the hole. Oh, he's dropped Drops it. it down. Still a chance. Parker mops up his mess. Yeah, it's a drop mark from Kurt Tippett, but... I think you've got to go back to Tom Mitchell's work rate again to spread from the centre out onto the far flank and get the ball and drive it in. Tipper worked really well to get, again, in some space, drop the mark, but uh, Luke Parker just continues on his merry way. We know he had uh, 29 touches last week. He's had 29 again and kicked the goal. He's having a fantastic season and another very good night. Let's have a look at uh, Luke Parker's night, and there's a pretty even spread. Not a lot of gaps there, Lynch. No, it's just uh, the picket fence going along there for his 29 disposals. Fans have found some voice here at the SCG. It's been relatively quiet by SCG standards most of the day. Kieran Jack, the captain, hacks it inside 50. Shaw has been mopping those up all day. Wilson, he's caught ball. Oh, oh, I think he's unlucky there. No hand pass. So Papley to ram home this advantage even further. It's just been a great surge by the Swans at the yeah. start of this final term. A couple of key clearances from the middle of the ground, pump it forward and put GWS under pressure. The new Colt figure keeps it low and sneaks it in. He has been a very good addition to this team. 
Gun Papley, a rookie listed player, elevated to this team. And here's the drop mark from Heath Shaw, but the the pressure, the tackling pressure that is applied, and yet that was a correct adjudication for the free kick there. And Papley, he's kicked goals in each of his three games. Looks very dangerous in that forward half is the young rookie from Gibbsland Power. And that's uh, Papwee's first two games. 14 disposals, averaging the two and a half goals. He kicked a three and a two. And uh, he continues on today in round three. Yeah, fantastic with that Swans heritage of both grandfathers playing for the Swans. Jack drives this towards Stewart. Franklin off hands, almost collected it. Do the Giants now believe they can make this comeback a reality? Well, it's just a breaking point now. Swans have kicked the last four goals, and that great defence, as Leon Cameron said, they stood up so well in the first three quarters, but just weighted numbers have got them under the pump. Johnson, Smith, Griffin to open the door up again. He's got Cor pleading for an inside 50, and he hits him, lays out. Gonna have to okay, wait. Hold. Has to go short, you could think. No oh. one's in the square. And he oh. turns it over to Lloyd. Worst of all possible options. Yeah, he tried to force something. In the end, he didn't have a, a really good option, so probably needed to hold it as long as he could. And if he couldn't find anything, maybe even chip it backwards to a, a teammate just to buy some time. And at worst, go long down the line and get a forward 50 stoppage. Jones turns it over, Mumford. Oh, he wants oh, 50. Oh, that's 50. Oh. Well, it will be 50. He was yeah, paid the mark. 50. Has well, to be 50. Kieran Jack is arguing that it was touched off the hand, and I half think it was because Mummy thought it was too. He was half playing on at the time, I think. It possibly was, but the, the whistle was blown. you got to play the whistle, exactly right. And so that's a, a very lucky break for Big Mummy, and this is exactly what the Giants need. Still with 15 minutes to go, plenty of time. Huge kick, the big man has to get this done now. It's a short-ish 50, still a tough kick for the ex-Swan against his old teammates. To keep this door open. Nice. And the knife's not in yet. The Giants still alive at the SCG. The one thing you can't do is anticipate the umpire's decision. You've got to play the whistle. Now, was it? Flick? Yeah, it looked like it was flicked off the hand in front. But they actually rarely get paid those little flicks of the finger. Yeah, you're right. And he looked like he was looking to hand pass the ball yeah. because I think he big, might have heard the touch. Big Mummy's thinking that was a little bonus there. <laughs> Still a lot of pressure to go back for the big man to slot that one through. Still a ton of time left in this. More than 37,000 here at the SCG. Back in the middle. Mumford to do it all again against Tippett. Tippett with a big hammer forward. Well read off the back though by Kelly. Dumps it to half forward. Devin Smith, good contest. Whitfield, clever collect. Green, Shield, normally uses oh, it well hands. to Kelly. Could go for home. No one in the square. He does. Has he got enough on it? Oh. You bet he has! <laughs> How good's that? Where's he, been cool hiding? that? Where's he been hiding that cannon in his leg? Well, that's right. I think he thought I'm just outside my range and he's just going to put it at the top of the goal square. And that he had is a good a lead. He had a good lead from Patner, who I thought he should have honoured. And shook him off. And it's just burned him. And he's kicked a ripper from out. He's kicked that from 55. Oh, that is a fantastic follow-up. Good clearance. Again, the pace of the clearance for the Giants has been critical. Clearances for the day are, are pretty, pretty even. But once they get the ball in hand, the Giants, they go. Oh, clearances are critical at the moment, and that is a first-class goal from the young start, young Kelly. Back in the middle, and again, silence at the SCG. Mumford stalking it, tip it, knocks it down, almost he does get his own clearance. Off hands, McLean inside, Hanbury loses it, and Williams is away in space. Great hit. Core, who's been good forward. Now they've got space forward. Jonathan Patton's on the move, and over the head of Lobb instead. Did some good early body work, Rampy, just to put Lobb off his lead. How good was that for Lobb? Dangerous kick, Stevie J, Cunningham. 
If and one, Stevie. Well, it's a great sign. Oh, oh is horrendous. that deliberate? Oh, what? <laughs> you can't. They've been paying them all day. <laughs> Jono's asking it, but <laughs> you can't pay a deliberate kick out of bounds if it's off your knee. You shank it. <laughs> Barry Hall downstairs. Yeah, well, I think Lobman, he's done it most of the day now where he's he's just been run out of the ball too much and he's just let it happen. I think he needs to body up his opponent and actually point to where he wants the footy. Let him set one, two, three, four, five steps and jump at the ball. No one will get near him. He's a really good athlete. I just think he needs to reset the way he's going about it. Yeah, it's a good call, Baz. Yeah. He, he needs to uh, establish position first and, and really use his body. Cunningham. A bit gun shy about kicking it, I think. Heaney feeds for him. Found some space. Franklin's inside 50. Bud wants it long. He goes shorter. McGlynn just beyond his range, you'd think. He can give it a roost if he wants to. He's thinking about it. Sinclair's in the square. He goes for Franklin. Davis right with him. Oh. Half a little toe. And Is the umpire says that's okay. We'll get a ball in. Look like that might have been out in the full. Oh. Big buddy. You see McGuinn played together, played a lot of football together. He was happy to go one-on-one -on -one real yeah. quick. Spotlight getting a bit brighter right now on every possession. Scully floats one out. From the crumb, Kelly looks up, Green, Scully, Devon Smith, flicks it wide, Shield. Little shimmy on oh, Kennedy. How oh, how good is that? Baby, that was good. Off he this. goes, couple Amazing. of bounces, it opens it up to Green. If he finishes this off, it'll be inspirational. Oh. Lace, Palmer, lace out. I need, to, well, I need to see that again. That's the old-fashioned shake and bake. Well, absolutely, wasn't it? He had no one to kick to, so he couldn't kick it. So he thought, I've got to try something ridiculous here and pulled it off. And that is great use of the ball. Have a look at this. Goes once. No one's going to come to me. Go twice. And I'll tell you what, I'll just smoke you, burn you oh, off with a oh. bounce. They've kicked the last two goals of the game, the Giants. Again, you can hear a pin drop. Reese Palmer for three in a row, and he misses. Can't afford to waste any. It was all but a floater off the boot. It's a three-kick game. There's three goals in it exactly. The great thing from a GWS perspective is they won't go away. You know, a big margin got opened up, and they fought back with a couple of quick ones. Heaney oh. up high. William Short, Steve Johnson. Oh, Ward's and got 50. 50. Oh, he's got 50. It's against Kieran Jack again. Too close. It's a 250s he's given away that could result in goals. And Stevie is Stevie J's telling the up by keep going. It's not 50. Keep <laughs> going. Trying real hard. He's, he's saying was, he wants a towel to dry his hands. He's calling out to a trainer. Heap of Jew. Right. Tra the trainer's just sitting back in the deck chair. Has not moved. Fence. Now. There was a, there was, there was a stage. Actually, not allowed. Yeah, to, not allowed to do, not that. Allowed to do that. I tried that a few times. Yeah. Now, I say no. He's going to make him kick for three in a row. The experienced head. That's what they bought him for. Oh, oh. How good's that? And they're the sort of things that Stevie Johnson gets involved with. A 50-meter penalty. He struggled to get into the game tonight, but he can do that. So it's that bigger protected zone that Kieran Jack straight into. And that's unfortunately for Kieran Jack, two 50-metre penalties. You'll see him here, the mark's taken. Kieran Jack comes running through there, and oh, he should be. Yeah, that's, that's harsh. That's stiff. Well, the argument is he should be running further to the right to get away from it rather than through it. He couldn't go much further. <laughs> In anyone's language, that is stiff. Here's Stevie Johnson, 16 disposals. Pretty quiet during that third quarter. Got a couple of touches late, but importantly, he's impacted the scoreboard right now in the last. There's two goals in it. Some nervous players out there right now. Jack scrambles it forward to Kennedy. They need to show some poise. Parker cut it down. Back to McGlynn. Sides his way to 40. There's the reply. Oh. <laughs> this has been a cracking quarter. It started with three goals of the Sydney Swans. Three goals of the Giants. And some of the stars for the Swans involved on that occasion. It was Parker, McGuinn, Kennedy. See the run and spread. Ran really hard forward. That's a great finish under pressure from McGuinn. At three Giants players closing in. Slotted it through really nicely.
18 points in it. Still a ton of time left. Still 11 minutes and change left. Callan Ward. Griffin. Whitfield open side. Bangs it long. Blazed away. And Rampy easily. Canterbury's his target. Griffin backs back on him. And took it. Strong body from Ryan Griffin. Plays on quickly. Canelio turned Mitchell inside out. Can he find a chest? Hoss Canelli got hands on it. Devin Smith back against the grain. Steve Johnson. Grundy, as you'd expect. He just didn't get a big piece of that one. Johnson tried to get it 45 metres around the body. Rampy. Played on. Heaney, one hand. Green. Sidestep was good. Then lost it. Got it back. Hoskin Elliott. Kennedy. They don't want to waste it. Top of the square. Off hands Rampy. Dangerous. Whitfield cuts it off. Full 360. Handball finds Mitchell. Everything under pressure right now. Kennedy barrels it down. Johnson knocks it out. Shield a sidestep. Off the back of the boot. Hanabry. Kennedy. Caught. Tried to slip away. Back to Hanabry. Turnover. Williams. He knocks it down. Sinclair had a piece. He's taken down. Tackled by Griffin. Comes back out. Cornelio. Williams. Finds a gap where there wasn't one. Shield. All the way back to Kennedy. It opens up for the Giants. This is the kick. Oh, great. And a delightful kick at that. How good was that 45 <laughs> seconds of play? Wasn't the ball like a hot potato? It was. The control, as Baz said, it's pretty dewy down there. The ball's slippery, but the control and the pressure, he is still in front of the Giants as far as the pr pressure, but it has really picked up both teams in this last term. Stephen Canelio to complete the deal. Will it bend it's back enough? It's coming! <laughs> it's a two-kick game again! I'm not sure what caused that to go right to left They're in a hurry on the last uh, half of the journey, but this is a fantastic game. There's young Giants players and the class and the superstars of the Sydney Swans, but the poise to hit that target to Cornelio after about, boy, oh, it had to be 20 odd handballs in concert. And that's great, great pass, great finish. Canelio, 21, and his second goal. They are coming hard. Plenty of running the legs of the Giants. The young Giants, the experienced Swans. And that's an important stat there. 13-7, the inside 50s in favour of the Giants in this turn. Green on hands and knees. Jack reaches in. Umpire circling. It comes out. Mumford on hands and knees. Had a piece of it. Mitchell somehow over the top. Heaney, the little one too. Scrambled forward, a bomb. A behind, 13 points. The margin, but still a ton of time for three goals for the Giants. Yeah, the run again for the Giants. They're working extremely hard. <laughs> it's a Giant. fine space. Packful first game of the year. He's been good. Wilson not 15, told to go. Caught. Back to Patful. Side of the boot. Tough ball. Kelly. Heaney. Kelly did well. Cornelio. And Patton close to the boundary with Grundy. Well, that's a great kick. Great result for the Giants. Just dribbled over the line. Allows them to reset. Plenty of numbers around. Nowhere to hide now. 7.49 left. Again, Mitchell just hacks it forward. Almost Robinson. Wilson caught. Heaney the steal back again. Hamble smothered. Well, well Great done. crash by McGlynn. Straight through the middle of them. Hanabry. Almost a hold. No free. Crowd screaming for it. Hits the deck. Lloyd Papley picks it up. Hands it out to Mitchell. Scrambles it towards Tippett. Can he get out? Oh, oh, oh he's he's Second one, he's dropped inside 50 in this last quarter. Still a chance for McGlynn. Oh, Almost caught high, kid. is caught high. Gee, that went through the hands of Kurt Tippett like a bar of soap, didn't it? I'm not sure he touched it. 
that just get, slipped straight through. Get a lot of it. But the follow-up work, they look like they were out the Giants, but then just the bad handball caused the turnover again. Here's the free kick. McGuinn just turned into Hoskin the tackle, Elliott, and yeah. Hoskin Elliott has given away the free kick. Big kick back into the team. First game of the season for Ben McGlynn. He's got to sink the slipper into this and sink the slipper into the Giants. Well, you know what? He ran right and he kicked it right. There's no excuse when you're directly in front to run away from your one target. Your pet hates. It is one of my pet hates, and you, 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 we've got the perfect view of yep. it there. Shaw drives it long, but there's no one there. Who's he looking for? Jack puts it to grass. Oh, Almost caught him. Jumped yep. into it and got lucky. Mind you, Jack slipped then as well. We've yeah. seen a number of those, and that ball must be slippery because they, it's too many players are not handling it cleanly. Bud wants it deep. Six and a half minutes left. It's in his direction, buddy. Mumford crashes it down. Whitfield waits for the crumb. Caught by Papley. Shaw. Wilson. Hanabry. Arms clear. Lloyd. Kennedy. Content oh. there. Very content. <laughs> That's fantastic. You've got so many players around the ball, they're going hammer and tongs at each other because there's a lot of pride because this developing Giants team hasn't played finals football and they're playing against one of the most professional elite clubs in the, the competition. Yep. They want to build this rivalry over a long period of time and they want to scalp here at the SCG. Griffin couldn't break away with it. Jack hits a good spot with that. Franklin's there. Kelly back with the flight. Did he take Franklin down? Yeah. Umpire said he did. So not against Phil Davis. Against his teammate who came in from the front. You're not suggesting he's going to run straight at the goals here, are you? Well, that's not his natural <laughs> standard, but, but he runs straighter than normal when he's yeah. in this sort of position. So you can see nothing wrong with Franklin, and it looked like an honest effort to spoil. And he squeezed it in just. They're not home yet, but they can see the finish line from here. Four goals to Lance Franklin, and whilst it might have come from a free kick, that's as important as anything he's done tonight, just to give them that bit of breathing space again, because the Giants were coming. They had a little bit of momentum that looked like they had legs coming. Now, everyone's got their eyes on the footy. So I reckon that's a tough decision on Josh Kelly, because I think he's looking at the footy trying to spoil yeah. as well. Yeah, probably but, if anything, you could see it might have been against Phil Davis for the arm over the top, but he did call, yeah. it was front on contact. contact. Could be another twist yet. An amazing rivalry building here. Fifth season for the Giants. As Alistair said, they've never played finals, but they're building. The Swans have played finals every season under John Longmire. Perennial finalists. Green knocks it out. Hits the deck. Mills is there. Scooped that up to Mitchell. Thrown out of it. Umpires put the whistle away. Green again. Backs into it. Swans haven't finished lower than sixth for the past six seasons. The Giants have come to the SCG to try and win for the first time. Oh, big, big mummy. Big mummy. Big mummy. down Nick Smith. The big fellas wound up there. Just inching the ball forward, yeah. aren't they? Stoppage after stoppage. But they, they still look to be running on top of the ground, the Giants. You've got to think they're still going to keep coming. The big fella. Sydney Chant brings around the SCG. Crowd don't know how long left. 25 minutes gone. Steve Johnson scrambles. They need some luck. Devin Smith toes it to his advantage. Almost. Patton goes in hard. Oh, he's died. Oh, no. It's spilled out. Lloyd. Can he collect it? Scully's trying to hunt him. Short pass from Lloyd. Turnover. Sure. Williams. They're outnumbered deep. So it's a one on two. Patton's the one. Swans have the two. Got his own crumb rampy. Now that's <laughs> that's deliberate. What, if it goes yeah, well that's, that's what the player gets that's there within five. Was. He's, oh, he's going to pay it. Yeah, they have. They <laughs> have Even when it. and the two players don't realise because they think well we're close to it. Kennedy can't believe it. That was similar to the decision in I think it was the against Phil Davis. Second quarter. Yeah. yeah, you're right. Twenty points. Four minutes twenty-five left. Edge of the seat stuff. Kennedy thumps it back. Lob got there. Couldn't bring the mark down. McLean. Dangerous. Rampy and Wilson. Little knock on Rampy. Papley and now Hoskin Elliott. He slid into it and picked it up and ran. 
The one, two. Oh, look out. Scrambles it to the midfield. Sinclair. That was an important mark from Sinclair. They've got to wait till they get numbers forward. For the knockout blow, Mumford, tip it, tip it. Good body work. Good well, that's body work. exactly what we spoke about pre-game, was tip it as the ruckman, dragging Mumford into the forward 50 to make him defend. Sinclair moved up the other side of the ground to become the ruckman, but Mumford had to stay with his man. Hasn't been overly impressive in front of a goal, Kurt Tippett. He does have a goal to his name, but he kicked one out in the full. It should have been a regulation kick, so... Needs to get a good strike on the ball here. Greasy conditions. To finally stick the knife in. Three and a half minutes left. And they should be home. Yeah, that one hurt. The Giants were working hard at the other end, but great transition. The spare deep really worked for the Sydney Swans. Got the overlap run and that, that important mark from Sinclair in the middle of the ground. Just to slow things up for a second until the numbers favoured Sydney forward of the ball. Papley was good. Even the floater pass hit Sinclair beautifully. As soon as Sinclair saw Mummy was playing full back, thought we'll get it in there quick. Ninety-three to sixty-seven. Last time these two teams met, it was an eighty-nine point win to the Swans, and they didn't even have Franklin in that game. These two teams closer than ever before. Shield hacks it inside fifty. Patton came hard. Smith. Whitfield on his left to the pocket. Early leap and unrealistic leap from Mills. Free kick green. It's just an error from a young, enthusiastic player. He, he didn't need to attempt something like that. That was the spot. Warwick Capper took a very similar <laughs> mark, just like that, I think, over Grant Laurie of Fitzroy many years ago, about 30 years ago. The players don't know how long left. They look at the scoreboard. It's 29 gone. Toby Green wants to keep this contest alive in his mind, and he misses to the near side. They won't try anything risky now, the Swans. They'll just look to hit some targets and chew off a bit of the clock. Rampy tried for the 50. Runner will be out there telling the players how long left. Telling him to slow it down at every opportunity. You can just see him. He was tapping his wrist like the, where the watch would be. He's talking about time there, Dane Rampy. Drives it wide. Kurt Tippett down there. Davis three deep with a fist. Scully. Lays the tackle on Jack. Hanabry throws that away. Yep. Inside 50s have turned around. 18-11 in favour of GWS in this quarter. Still well down for the game, but they've dominated the quarter. Williams. Tries to keep the dice rolling. And Laidler floats in. The spare back there has certainly worked pretty well for the Swans this last term. Thus, the ball's gone in there more because they're outnumbered up the field. Used it well back. Mumford, Franklin, all up. Green, Shield, who's tried his heart out. Griffin opens up for Kelly. Kick the ripper earlier. Oh. Rolls that forward. Richards, good scoop on the move. Well, oh. not so good. Kennedy almost dacked the one-two with Jack. Now the overlap. Mitchell, boys there. Cunningham can take some seconds off the clock. They'll be undefeated tonight, the Sydney Swans. Three from three. Perfect start for 2016. Free kick. Wilson yeah. too high. Done the job well, Sydney, haven't they? Yep. Just knew that as we take a look at the live ladder, you know, they played an extra game than uh, a few of those teams, and the Bulldogs on percentage can go past them, but... They're in a very, very good spot at the moment, the Sydney Swans. Big game next week, round four, Adelaide at the Adelaide Oval for the Sydney Swans. Giants have Port Adelaide. Mumford couldn't get a run up that one, knocked out of play. We're sticking around for a couple of post-game interviews. Been a fantastic atmosphere from the outset here at the SCG. It's been intense, low scoring early. 17 minutes elapsed without a goal to either team. 
They stormed the castle, the Giants. They just couldn't get in. Griffin. Mumford. Scully. Swans with an extra back. And it's Rampy. Thumps it away. A little bit of ping pong. And Teddy thumps it towards the line. Rampy. Does that very well. And there's a learning tool for all those around the competition as to how you can still do it. And, and then it, turfed it away from the boundary umpire. <laughs> just close enough where it didn't look deliberate. It gives him time to get back. The ninth battle of the bridge will go to Sydney. It'll be eight to one. And still yet to lose one here at the SCG. Mumford with the flick back. Hanbury around the body. Franklin. <laughs> Had a couple of turns in the lead. The Giants just couldn't translate it into a big margin. Mitchell again. Seconds tick down. Fantastic contest. But not in our house. Sydney Swans prevail. 25 points the final margin in the ninth battle of the bridge. 93 to 68. A cracking game in front of 37,000 and uh, we've applauded throughout the night the young players of the GWS Giants but the superstars once again for the Sydney Swans led by Hanbury Parker, Kennedy, then a few of the youngsters Lloyd, Mitchell, Rampy, all very good and they responded every time the challenge was thrown down by the Giants the Swans bounced back and they just converted their opportunities. Weighted numbers in the end took its toll on the Giants. Yeah, look, they won the inside 50s in the last quarter, the Giants, but they still lost them 67-47. And when as much of the game is played down your opponent's forward line, it's going to be very difficult to win that match. They gave themselves a chance for a while, but just couldn't get it done. In fact, it was 20 to 11 in that fourth quarter. Barry, I think Barry Hall's uh, doing his best to track somebody down. Let's uh, find out who have you grabbed, Baz? Well, I've tracked a, a pretty big figure down here, uh, Chief, but uh, what, a, what a, a great contested game of football. We know that they're really good on the outside, but uh, he's got them on the inside and he did pretty well in the end. Yeah, definitely. They're, they're a quality side. Um, they were never out of the game. And they fought back in that last quarter and we had to really dig deep to, to win. So um, a little bit disappointed that we probably failed in that fourth, but it was nice in that last 10 minutes to come home and kick a couple of goals and um, go into next week with a bit of confidence. Well, you were peppering the inside 50s. The inside 50 count was very, very lopsided, but a little bit inefficient. But as you said, a couple of goals late to give you a bit of bread in the space. Yeah, yeah we're definitely getting our hands on the balls. The midfielders are on top. We're getting those inside 50s. we just got to convert them and um, start taking our marks inside 50 and then um, kicking the goals. Kurt Tippett's form has been outstanding the first three rounds and uh, look, to go up against Mummy and, and do the job he did today was a fantastic effort. Yeah, definitely. Mummy's a super player, but Tip and Sinkers are, have been terrific this season, so it's just about being consistent the whole way through the year and um, yeah, enjoy it. There's a bit of feeling in that game. The rivalry is starting to really hype up in, the, in Sydney here. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's good for New South Wales football that we've got a big rivalry up here and we absolutely love playing GWS and it was a really good game. What about yourself? Looks like you're really starting to enjoy your footy. Yeah, it was good. I always enjoyed my football. That was never an issue, but um, yeah, it was just great to be out here and, and get the victory. Well, it's great to have you back, and it's great to see you enjoying it. Thanks. Yeah, well, cheers, Bass. They're getting close to the Giants. 25 points the margin today. Last time they met, it was 89. Fifth year in the competition. Leon Cameron, his third season as senior coach, has got something going at the moment. I know they haven't started perfectly. They had a loss in round one. But uh, they are, are coming in this competition. Barry Hall is back downstairs and with another one of the stars of the show. Yeah, thanks, Dwayne. Here with Luke Parker. Well, it's going to be a real midfield battle. We know what uh, their midfield's like been in the last couple of weeks. You've been in really good form yourself, but uh, good over them in the end. Yeah, I think um, we always knew it was going to be a massive midfield battle. I think Shields and uh, Coniglio and blokes like that, they're, they're such a hard midfield um, to battle against. It's like big bodies. And um, look, we, we probably weren't at our best early and uh, we got going at times. It was a bit up and down, but the main thing was we got the job done in the end. A lot of the senior players are really pulling their weight, but uh, young Papley and, and Callum Mills, they're, they're really starting to find their feet. Yeah, for sure. It's just exciting to be a part of and 
see how, how well those boys are doing at the moment. I mean, Paps is just so dangerous down forward and just gives another spark to this team and sparks up the club and the crowd love him. So, um, and Mills is just uh, outstanding off, off half back and you've seen him take a few grabs and really back himself. So he's, he's been outstanding as well. Joe, just keep coming. Adelaide next week over there, big task. Yeah, always is going over there. It's a pretty hostile crowd over there. So uh, we'll look forward to it and uh, rest up this week and get into it. Been a great form, Otto. Cheers, buddy. Thank you. 25 points to final margin, Sydney Swans 14-9, 93 to the Giants 10-8, 68. Yes, uh, thanks very much to Dwayne Russell and Jason Dunsell and the team up there at the SCG. So the Sydney Swans continue their unbeaten run against GWS at the SCG. And let's have a look at the scores. The final scores, as Dwayne said there, 14-9-93 to 10-8-68. Uh, the Swans led by 13 points at quarter time, kept GWS goalless in that opening term. They came back hard. That was only a goal, the difference at half time. 14 points of difference at three-quarter time. And in the end, it was a 25-point victory, a seesawing last quarter, but in the end, the Swans just holding their nerve and going on with it and winning by 25 points.